right here, right now in my head. Oh, you got to be kidding me. All right, see ya. No. Stop singing it. <laughs>
Um, and today we are talking about continuation gaps. Yesterday we talked about initiation gaps uh, to start the uptrend or downtrend. It works both ways. To today we're talking about continuation gaps. And this happens, uh, can you believe it? It continues the trend, continuation gaps, right? I know, can you believe it, Katina Man? So the point is here, we're looking for periods of consolidation following an uptrend or a downtrend from which we break out. So the continuation gap uh, is our, it, it's a gap that takes place already in an uptrend or downtrend. However, the specific area in that uptrend or downtrend usually is a period of consolidation uh, where the market is catching its breath and then we break up or down from that area. And you'll see that described perfectly here in this picture. So we have this, uh, whatever little consolidation area earlier on, that's a common gap that means bupkis, and then we get that breakaway gap to start the uptrend. Then we get a period of consolidation sideways, and then we break out of that period of consolidation into the uptrend again. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So some of the characteristics of the continuation gaps are basically your trying to recognize specific characteristics that distinguish it from other gaps. And the first one that we're gonna try to um, analyze and look for is volume analysis. So continuation gaps often are accompanied by lower trading volumes compared to breakaway gaps or initiation gaps. So remember yesterday when we were talking about looking for that confirmatory indicator for the breakaway gap, one of the main indicators we're looking for is above average volume. Whatever the average you're looking, whether you're looking at our vol, whether you're looking at average volume over five years, a year, it has to be above average. In this particular case, we're looking for this gap to have lower volume than the initiation gap. So that's the first thing, okay? This basically reflects the temporary slowdown in market activity during this consolidation phase. Again, we're continuation gaps are breaks away from consolidation. And then, surprise, surprise, we're also looking for a consolidation pattern. So continuing, continuation gaps are typically found within consolidation patterns or periods, such as flags, pennants, triangles, you name it. These patterns indicate a brief pause in the trend before it continues upward or downwards, works both ways again. And then essentially here, what we're looking for is price action confirmation as the third um, characteristic of the uh, continuation gap. So traders often look for confirmation through subsequent price action after a continuation gap, ensuring that the trend indeed resumes in the expected direction. In this case, what the one we're looking at, it was an uptrend, so it has to continue up. If it gaps down from the consolidation, uh, from the consolidation area, well then it's a, failed, uh, it's a failed continuation gap. And then, you know, clearly that's not uh, what we're looking at, likely looking at a common gap in that particular case. Um, any questions or comments, Adara, before we continue on to HUD ID? Yeah, no, I think I think what's cool about this one is it kind of is, um, it's just kind of like a breath, you know what I mean? Like the stock's taking a little breath to the upside, mm. and then we're keeping going. And also, too, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to show the Microsoft Absolutely. Daily chart. I think I saw you getting excited there on the on the side. I was very pleased as punch. Thank you. Yeah, there was a, there is the meta short, but we're not, I, I want to talk about this. Um, I appreciate that. We're, I like, we're all pleased as punch for each other here. It's a nice, uh, beautiful <laughs> group effort. Here at how uh, at the mid uh, yeah, how to trade I, I said the right name then I said the wrong name, but I'm going to look at this Microsoft Daily because I was looking at this one earlier and this seems to have some of these continuation yeah there, there is our name uh, these continuation gaps a little bit right so it's kind of harder to see in this chart but you do see like we're we're kind of in this upward trend with these slight gaps to the upside they're less significant I think than the ones in that remember picture. though Adara even though that makes sense what you're saying because we're continuing up and there's a gap continuation gaps take place at a period of consolidation. Okay. So we do typically need some sort of sideways move, like a bull flag, you know, when we have that big pull and then there's, ram, ram, uh, and then there's a sideways price action, we break away from that sideways price action, okay. right? So we do need a period of consolidation for- So it's a bit more decisive. Yeah, than ow, you. wow, you. Apple is absolutely tanking here. The Katina man is absolutely printing. And now he's, uh, he's twirling down the toilet there. <laughs> Uh, 153 short Google Katina man. Believe it or not, he's printing on Apple, but he's up more on the Google short than he is on the Apple short. So make of that what you will right there, even though Apple's flunking here. And uh, we're watching we're watching the games wither away, Adara, 
on uh, this bad boy here because we're holding that in the personal account. The Katina Man now a dollar in the money on that Google short. Or no, that, that was 150. Two for Apple, excuse me. Half for nice. Google. Um, big caliber debt being short Apple for days since 195. Dump it. Well, I hope you print. I hope I print too. So if we, if we can collectively print, it would be nice. All right, guys, let's move on to the next um, topic here. How to identify continuation gaps. Traders use various tools and techniques to identify continuation gaps within their technical analysis model. The first one we're gonna be looking at is charts, obviously. Continuation gaps are often associated with specific chart patterns, like I said, bull flags, bear flags, pennants, or symmetrical triangles. Recognize these patterns, uh, recognizing, excuse me, these patterns aids in identifying potential continuation gaps. All right, the second thing is we're looking at a volume decline. So observe a decline in trading volume during the gap, indicating a temporary reduction in the market participation. So what we're comparing the volume here uh, in the continuation gap is not to just the overall relative trading volume for that particular instrument. We're comparing the volume in the continuation gap to the volume that we've observed in the breakaway gap, the initiation gap, okay? So that's what we're looking at there. Is it lower volume? And in specifically, we are looking for lower volume on this bad boy, okay? So that's one thing we, need, we should know, because yesterday we were looking for above average volume. And the third, how to ID um, these continuation gaps is price support and resistance levels. Continuation gaps often occur near support or resistance, emphasizing the significance of these levels in identifying the potential continuation pattern. And that is very similar to what we talked about yesterday. So when we talked about the initiation gaps or the runaway gaps, we looked specifically at it breaking away from a key level of support, whether that was an upward channel, like we talked about in the example yesterday, or whether that was a key resistance level, a horizontal resistance level, say the 200 on Apple, for example, or the 300 on Caterpillar, 500 on Nvidia, is it gapping up above a key level um, at which it's found resistance in the past. So that is the, uh, the, the three characteristics that we're looking for and how to ID them. Chart patterns, volume decline, and breaking above or below support and resistance. Can I ask a question about volume? Sure. So I know when we were talking about um, chart patterns and consolidation, we said sometimes uh, for some of them, there'll be a little bit less volume while the pattern is, uh, especially if it's consolidated, and then it'll break out with volume. But this one is a breakout with less volume? So. When we talk about the bull flag continuation, the second flag will have lower volume than the first flag, okay. but that's not a that's not a gap. Okay. Right. So that's just a continuation in the pattern. That's that's normal. Oh, so it's we're just continuation. Yeah, okay. we're talking about specifically when there is a gap breaking above the pennant, breaking above the flag, breaking above the ascending okay. wedge. We're not talking about flowing. Uh, price action through those levels normally. Okay. We're talking about it gapping. So when we look at the gap itself, just the day that it gapped, and we compare it to the initiation gap, there should be lower volume on the continuation gap than on the initiation gap. I don't mean anything about patterns here. I'm saying it's breaking away from a pattern. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah. Okay, so then, um, so basically, yeah, so it's like, uh, and then also, I guess, uh, much like, you know, when we break out of, of continuation patterns, we're breaking out in whatever direction it's generally moving. So we've had consolidation, yes. Yes. and then we're continuing the move. Okay, Dang. I just want to make sure Dang. I like, understand it. Thank Absolutely so agree. Yes, well said, Dara. Um, all right, guys, the third and the last of the topics today is trading strategies. How do you trade these continuation gaps? We're gonna keep it super simple. Once you ID the continuation gap, traders can implement specific strategies to capitalize on the anticipated resumption of the existing trend. In this case, we're looking at upward here. So the first thing is trend following. Use continuation gaps as entry points for trend following strategies. And yesterday we went over what some trend following strategies were. We talked about moving average crossovers and those work in a trending market. So you're looking for uh, an entry point here if you missed initially the initiation gap to start the trend, okay? The second thing is pattern recognition. You should be combining the identification of continuation gaps with recognitions of continuation patterns, enhancing the reliability of the signal. Go back to our week on chart patterns. How many categories did we have for chart patterns? We talked about continuation patterns, reversal patterns, and consolidation patterns, okay? So in this particular case, you are looking for continuation pattern, a bull flag, 
um, an ascending triangle. Uh, so many other con uh, patterns are you know, coming to my mind right now, but you, you should be looking for continuation patterns to sort of verify the move on the continuation gap area. That's really all that it is. So to, to repeat those two, trend following. So try to figure out a way in that consolidation area to get in once you see the gap and to look for a continuation pattern on the chart to help confirm that continuation gap. I, I, okay, so also, um, sorry, I'm just gonna, I've been asking so many questions today on this I one. I think that that's normal, yeah. Oh, thank you, Good. appreciate that. But with, um, so basically, uh, do you always need an initiation gap in order to get yeah. a continuation gap? Yes. Okay, so yes. so it's like we it basically you're seeing like multiple gaps yeah. in this talk. Okay, so and if you sure. don't, Adara, then it is a common gap, and we're going to be talking about common gaps on Thursday. Tomorrow we talk about exhaustion gaps, the end of the trend. It is a reversal pattern. So typically, what you see in gaps, uh, if you are to see gaps, you're going to have an initiation gap, a continuation gap, and an exhaustion gap. Tomorrow. We're going to be talking about exhaustion gaps, which typically signals the end of the move, whether up or down. And then Thursday, we'll talk about common gaps, the bamboozling style of gaps, the one that may make you think it's an initiation, but ends up being bubkis. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, because I feel like I clearly have a lot of questions. I'm clearly, there are some gaps in my gap knowledge. So <laughs> uh, I mean that sincerely, although it is a fun. I love how that um, just came in. <laughs> I had to. But no, thank you for, for being patient with me, because nice. I do think the thing is, and hopefully like other people, you know, are getting something out of this as well, because I do think that because there's so many different kinds of gaps, I think I'm just trying to wrap my brain um, around Fair. all of it. So thank you so much for uh, being patient. I like that we're doing them in order as well. We're starting with initiation. Yeah. We initiate with the initiation gap, then we're continuing with the continuation gap and then the uh, exhaustion and then common. Cause you kind of, I think for me, it's helpful to see the order yeah. of the trend. And remember you and I discussed yesterday starting with common gaps and how to see whether a gap was, you know, not a nothing burger or was actually something. But then we wouldn't have anything to compare it to. So we should probably start with when the gaps are valid and then we'll, we'll show you when they mean nothing. Yeah. And that's why I chose to do it on Thursday that for the common gaps. All right, so guys, let's talk a little bit about this trade right now because Apple finding a bit of a bounce off 188. We are short 188.81. We got several beak wetters there through the break of 188 in the 187 high 90s. It looks like this one might be curling up into our entry. So what I've done already is I put in a stop. It's a break of 189. I want to see how it starts acting at that 189 level. We're probably going to have to look at the whole dollar level um, every time it reaches the whole dollar um, for now because, well, it kind of stair-stepped down, didn't really give you a flat bottom break off which we could work. So we're about 20 pennies away now from uh, our entry, but the stop is on the other side of 189. So if we do get stopped out, we're gonna have to give about 19 pennies worth of uh, profit here. I've got one fifth of the position left. So taking out already four fifths of, of the position, waiting for about 80% of the position, waiting with about 20% left on this bad boy to see if we can get that 189 rejection. As I look on my chart though, uh, let's do a little bit of charting here to figure out where the resistance could come in if it doesn't stop at 189. Well, look where VWAP is here on my chart, at least right now, VWAP's at 189 and three quarters. And then we don't really have another definable uh, price action level until we get into that 189, well, sorry, 190 and a third, 190 and a quarter. That was the low that we made in the pre-market. Look how long that consolidation was there at 190 and a quarter. So if we don't stop at 189, if we don't stop at 189 and three quarters, I'll definitely be looking for resistance coming into that 190, 190 and a quarter if Apple continues to send up. But you know, this could be what my friend Neil calls a dead cat bounce, where we just find a little bit of support for the moment at 188, and then we big boy Khwadunk into, you know, into more red territory. We just got, you know, we broke through support level one on pivots. We just got a little bit above support level two on uh, using pivots here. So right now, just getting a, a bounce up, Adara. How goes your trade on City? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's honestly, it is sitting. There is, uh, you know how I was yesterday, I was joking that my trade in block, like SQ was the, the world's least interesting trade. Um, <laughs> I think City might, might be trying to take its crown there. No, I'm joking. We're just kind of sitting here around this um, 56 area. I got in because I did see we held the 56 really well. We're breaking down below it a little bit 
teeny tiny position. I was trying to add, and then I didn't end up getting added here. But basically, as long as we don't make a lower low, I'm good. I, I'm really watching for that uh, 55, 80 break. Because we had a lot of consolidation here. We bounced there not once, but twice. So I'm really going to be watching here. As long as we don't have a lower low, I'm interested. And if I see a, a nice little bottom um, here around the way, I'm actually tempted to add to this position as well. Even around here, if we continue holding this 55, 95-ish area, I will add. But there, um, I'll talk about my, my meta trade in a second because I... I want to talk about it, but also um, there's a couple things in the chat I want to address. Jonathan Canny saying, have we done a lesson regarding uh, scaling into a position? I think we mentioned it during risk management, but we haven't done a full, we haven't done a full lesson on that, I don't think. I don't know scaling exactly, but we did DCAing, dollar yeah, cost averaging. We, did, yeah. we said it had to be planned and you have to uh, take do dollar cost average entries at key support levels if you're going long or key resistance levels. If you're going short, it shouldn't just be willy nilly. Uh, let me DCA uh, here because I so feel so inclined. No, it has to be planned and it has to be based on key levels. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. And I feel like also speaking, I've been trying to incorporate that lesson a little bit more. Do you know what I mean with the yeah. DCAing? So I think, I think that's really important, but I think that's the extent to probably to which we did mention it. So that's like with, with regards to scaling, just doing it consciously yes, is the thing that we talked about there. Also, also, AI in the chat, can you please help me understand, do the colors of the volume bars underneath the chart represent if more green um, buying or sell red was done in that volume candle? Yes. So basically what it is, is uh, the volume candle is the color of what the candle ended up being. So see, we had um, right at open here on City at 930, we did have that, uh, that large green candle that shows, hey, we saw a lot of volume here, and it was, this volume was to the upside, the candle closed green. So that is what that means. Uh, thank you so much for asking too, because I think that's something it took me a little bit of a moment to wrap my head around when I first began, which was uh, not that long ago. I'm definitely still learning here. Also, uh, Thomas Johnson saying there's no such thing as a dumb question. The only dumb question no. is the question you don't ask. Absolutely. So thank you for saying that. Because, yeah, I mean, especially here, we're all trying to learn. So, yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to ask questions. But, yeah, I will talk about the meta trade now as much as I've been weirdly uh, prolonging it. I don't know why, because I, <laughs> I, I enjoyed this trade. So I got in here. Um, speaking of uh, averaging, and I did do that here, I got in uh, right below this 405 because I, I noticed we were kind of falling off. Uh, we fell below this key-ish area right above uh, 405. And I say key-ish because look at how we held this. We held it here. We bounced to a lower high. Then we came back. And then we just kind of petered down from there. So I mm. got involved initially at that 404.80. And then I went to get a coffee and I said, Meta, please fill. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came back and it filled and it was very happy. I should have gotten involved again at the 405.30. That's where I should have DCA'd in. I got involved right above that 405 because I still thought we were holding that level pretty well. I wasn't decisive enough. And as Sean is always saying, you know, a scared trader is a deficient trader. Uh, so I, I should have been involved at that 405.30 when I first saw that holding. But it is what it is. I'm not going to try to regret it too much. I still like where I uh, added to this position. And then I basically, we, we did fall below here, fall below VWAP. As I said, my plan was really to take out uh, the lion's share of this position around that 404. I ended up splitting it into thirds. So we, I do, I've mentioned scalpulation in the past. What I do is I like looking at the book and I like seeing what price areas are we struggling with. Uh, based on those price areas, that's where I'll take out a little bit, right? So I saw that we were having a really hard time with that 40420 initially, took out a third of the position of 40420. Then we sunk down to 404. Then I was initially planning on keeping the rest of this uh, for the road at that 40450, because look at all this pre market consolidation around here. But in the end, pardon? No, you don't get it. You don't know the Russell Peters joke? I do not know. You've never seen the Russell Peters I know Russell stand -up? Peters, but I don't know that joke. I'm not doing the accent because I'll get canceled, but at 3450, uh, people know what that is. Oh, look that up. Okay. Tina Man knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. It's 2024, Neil. I'm, I'm worried. Go ahead, Tara. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. But yeah, so. No, it's okay. But yeah, so even like at, I, I just basically bringing up meta again, I ended up getting out at that 403.80 because I noticed that was where we were having some um, chop and churn a little bit. So I'm happy I got out there because initially they, we did rebound up to 404.50 and I probably would have panicked had I still been in the stock then. I'm going to be really honest. But I, I basically that's where I, when I say scalpulation, what I mean by that is having a plan and then using the book to kind of alter that plan if need be within reason, not significantly, but just if there's certain levels that are holding better than others or worse than others. Also, look at Meta bouncing off that 40350 area that we had earlier, consolidation. Now we're coming back, we might be curling back up. Oh. I am not saying by any means I want to jump up with both feet into a long here, but I do find this bounce to be kind of peculiar and I will be keeping an eye on that. We're hitting the dollar Congrats. club for Adara, oh, baby, you. because that is a hell of a Meta short there. Nice. Short Adara, Jeez Thank you Louise. very much. Yeah. 
All right, and like we have three bee quitters. We do. Look I... at the bee quitters increasing. <laughs> okay, okay. We we okay. dipped our uh, like little uh, <laughs> beak into the pond three times. Mr. Love Shack and Michael Wu know exactly what I'm talking about. I see you, Michael. If you know, you know. Yeah, of course. Especially if you're from Toronto, uh, you know exactly who Russell Peters is, and you've likely seen the stand up too. So, uh, shout out to that man. Apparently, he lives in Vegas. Did you know he lived in Vegas, Katina man? And his house is like big boy. Yeah, well, it wouldn't surprise him. All right, guys, um, interesting look here on AAPL. We're coming into that 50 period here on the one, and we seem to be getting rejections at the 50 period on the one. So, again, uh, I put my stop on the other side of 189. I didn't want to put it on my entry because the market doesn't care where I got in or where I got out. It cares about key support and resistance levels and I you know how I feel about these whole dollar levels so put it on the other side of 189 hoping that maybe it'll curl back down into 188 and we can get some uh, better prints here we have the best print we've got is at 187.97 and that's as good as we could do so it wasn't even a buck in the money uh, we'll see what the uh, what the rest of the day brings. All right, let's bring in the side charts and talk about the small cap gappers du jour. And among them today, Adara, is our friend DWAC. DWAC is back in action, baby, after taking a couple day hiatus, back five and a quarter percent, awfully close to the highs, doing the dance right now with 38, touch 39 and a half to start, or not to start, but at around at 10.30 a.m., Holding VWAP decently, dipped a little bit below it to 37 and a, uh, 37 12, bouncing back off it right now. We'll keep an eye on DWAC. The liquidity is a little suspect though. Then the big boy on the day, NEXI, got off the schneid, as my friend Neil likes to say yesterday, uh, from that $6 area, did top out at 11.50, and today it really went berserk. Opened up the day at that nine and a quarter, did not look back. Touched almost 29, 28.69. This is the five minute look here on NEXI. Look, to me, I'm not chasing this. It's awfully uh, spready, awfully volatile. I'm gonna have to take this off key levels. I like that 20, $21 level. It's above VWAP for now. It's also the consolidation top from this period here that we uh, trended from 10.25 to around 11. That's the high end of that uh, period. So if we can get back into $20, $21, I'll be looking to uh, possibly get long at that level. It's got to stay above VWAP though. Right now, VWAP $19 on my chart. Then RVSN, I'm going to give this one the champion. You see the Katina man holding up the trophy every day. RVSN gets the small gap cap gapper trophy because this bad boy has been running for almost two weeks now. A quick perfunctory look here at the hourly chart. It shows that in, uh, shows that very clearly. We started talking about this bad boy on January 16th. That's the first day this one started moving. It had a decent day, got off that $1 area that it had closed off the day prior, and it got into about $3. It really has not looked back since then. And you can see all the RVSN uh, tickers over here. That's how many times I've covered this. Every time I cover it, I put in a new ticker. Uh, so I just don't have to go back and drag the other one. But there you go, you can see uh, the chart on this bad boy looking awfully good. The low on the day is 18 bucks, which also happens to be yesterday's high. So support, so resistance acting as support for now in RVSN. I really haven't figured out a way how to get into this bad boy. Uh, it is holding VWAP yesterday. I didn't look at what it did yesterday. It did do a VWAP hold high of daybreak, which is one of the the um, the trades that I have on these small cap gappers. I'll have to go back and look on the one and the five, but right now doing an awful good job of holding that $21 level, which is where VWAP is. The other one, PXLW. I don't know any of the details on this one because it's a new one. Oh, I do. I uh, do. You know the float? I don't know the float story, but okay. I know I know the story. The headline, yeah, go yeah. for it. So this one uh, made a multi-year deal with Walt Disney Studios. No further terms or details have been announced, but that is what's making Pixelworks move up today. I'm sorry, I wish I knew the float, but <laughs> that's fine. I got yeah. it right here. Thank you. You you carry some. You carry that. I'll carry this. 51.6 million share float. Let's find out using trade ideas what the short float is. Shout out to the NOS boss and his crew. PXLW. Negligible short float, 0.59 here according to trade ideas, so nothing we need to really concern ourselves with. But this one, again, 
Uh, not tradable for me at the moment because it is sub VWAP. VWAP on my chart around that $2.21 area we're trading at 216, but it is putting in higher lows. So that trend is still holding up. We'll see whether we get any opportunities on it. And then last but not least, obviously, is gonna be Lucid. I mean, Lucid is, you know, it's not a small cap gapper, but it's multi-day runner. Adara bringing you the uh, headline on this bad boy at the big desk. They're making uh, some sort of uh, deal with a steel maker. Was it a steel maker? Aluminum Aluminum panels, maker, thank you, yeah, which is what cars are made out of. So that makes more sense. Uh, $3.36 is where we closed out yesterday. 3.82 the high today. Bounced off view up at around 3.55. We'll see what the rest of the day brings. Yeah, I mean, there's so many small caps. Like, doing the small cap recap today, it was like, what do I not include? What small caps feelings do I hurt? Because they're all so strong, and there's so many good small cap looks today. Yeah, RVS said, I know what that doesn't stand for, reversion. I mean, I'm joking. Uh -huh. But that one's been strong for so many days now. It's like breaking all the small cap rules. And I think it goes back to what you mentioned, too, with small caps. If it's run in the past, it does have the power in it to run again. And RVS said, certainly proving that true. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. It does not Unreal. want to quit. No, sir. Also, I'm just Shout out Diamond Realty of Miami in the chat, 305. Uh, hashtag Beak Wedding Toe Dipping Crew. That is certainly <laughs> us over here for sure. Uh, making some trades, um, trying to try to learn here in the sim. Uh, very grateful to be here. Got our first uh, Beak Wedder, speaking of Beak Wedding, All right. in Citigroup, actually. So I have, and I've mentioned this before, one of my things that I like to do is I like to take out part of the position always where we had previous resistance. Because I don't really trust stocks that much. You know, they don't care about your feelings. So they if don't. I'm like, hey, if we had trouble getting over this area before, I don't, I don't want to give it that much room to run. You know what I mean? So I took out some profit here. Like I said, pretty small trade, just trying to just try to, I guess, dip my toe in and, and get comfortable getting into trades when I see setups I like. So I'm happy to DC8 into this. I do have a piece left for the dream, uh, uh, something left for the road here. I'm gonna look at the daily here. Oh, we did, uh, we're, we're kind of struggling here above this area, but I'm gonna keep it in for now and kind of see where we go. If we make a new lower low, I am saying adios um, oh, to wow. this stock. Also, I have a question actually, yeah, so looking at this. Right. Is there a type of gap that Citigroup would fall into here? Because I don't want to diagnose gaps where there aren't any. But is this, would this be considered some kind of gap? Is that or? Uh, excluding pre-market action? I, I, I'm not sure. Is that City? Okay, let me That's have a look. That's City. Yeah, Thank you, I appreciate that. Look. Here on City. But again, um, you know, we don't want to confuse every gap we see with a gap that uh, we try to categorize. I but, understand, yeah, I'm, yeah. I was just curious too. Let me just remove the pre-market data on this and then Thank I'll be able much. to see it. So show right. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, it's a good gap, Adira. Okay. Uh, quite frankly, yeah. Now, this is a bit of a toughie because it is following in the direction of the trend. So could you say that this was a consolidation period? You could. You could say it was a bit of a retracement, some sideways movement. So if anything, this could be a continuation gap, but I don't even see the initiation gap here. So there is no gap to initiate this move. Uh, so that is, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, without really seeing the initiation gap here, I'm gonna have to categorize this bad boy as a common as a common gap, but it's showing the relative strength of financials, hence why I got into XLF uh, to start the year. I think it'll be a decent year for financials, if not uh, if if not for uh, you know some of the the DeFi because we were talking about SoFi yesterday. So we'll have to wait and see what that all brings. Let me just add back outside of market trading hours. Yeah, so decent decent look here for uh, City today. Holy cow, why is City up so much? I got upgraded by um, uh, Morgan Stanley. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because it yeah, was yeah. upgrading all the banks. They were mm. upgrading Goldman, they were upgrading Bank uh, right? of America. They were like, all our friends are gonna get upgrades today. <laughs> all our bank buddies. So uh, Morgan Stanley being very generous with these banks today. Um, I haven't, let, I wanna look at BAC now too. Thank you also for talking about the gaps. I appreciate yeah, of course. that. And that actually brings me to a, a question. Um, so is there a certain period it has to be consolidating for before we have the continuation gap? Or can it just be like we had an initiation gap then we consolidated for X amount of time? Well, here's the, I don't know the, the answer to that specifically, but what I do know is that support and resistance levels become more important the more time they're touched. Okay. So if we have a longer period of consolidation and then we get a break through say 200 on Apple, just giving you any random number there, uh, and stock, and if we've had umpteen amount of touches at that 200 and we finally get a gap through there, there's a less likelihood we'll fail. I see. You see, so the more times a re support or resistance levels touch and reject, touch and reject, touch and reject, and then you get a decided breakthrough it, the more valid it is. 
Okay. So if that applies to gaps as well, because we're talking about gapping through a key supporter resistance level, I think that that's the answer to the question, but you know, I don't have a specific answer to that. No, like I didn't read yeah. anything specifically about that question. I understand. They, yeah. I just wanted, yeah, I just like, you know, trying to get like a sense of like the context. But that makes sense. Fair. I think it's, yeah. you know, what, as you say, the balance of the evidence, I think it yeah. goes back to that as well, yeah. right? And so Absolutely. if the evidence is this level is really key and then we break above it, specifically in pre-market, I think, you know, definitely exactly. uh, would explain what happens there. So thank you. I appreciate uh, going over that there. Also, um, Violet Summer in the chat, I really like that name, saying uh, RVSN trying to go. So let's, I, I'm curious because this one, has been, oh, I see what you mean. We had a pseudo double top here, just above that 23. We got to 23, and then we, we bounced back to this earlier area where we had wow. consolidation, I love levels, right below this $20 level, and then we bounce up and we make higher highs, higher lows. We hit that 20, just above 23 again, and RVSN sellers say, nah, -uh -uh, and push <laughs> it back. So I, I'm definitely gonna be cognizant of this. I don't think it's what I would trade because Small caps make me a little scared. Yeah, but well, I, I blame you. They appreciate that. But yes, I'm just keeping an eye on that. Mostly I'm just in the Citigroup trade. And um, also, someone was asking me in the chat, um, it was Dinglebot, I really like that name, Dinglebot42, no Lily trade today, lol. <laughs> um, and I think, yeah, there's no volume on Lily. I have a new rule, I need Lily at a milli until I get involved. Uh, that being said, the chart pattern on this is really beautiful. And it's making me hope we do get to, I don't, you know, not hope yet, but if we get to a milli, I'll be interested. And why I say that is look at this higher, higher lows, this oh, flat wow. top at 646. That's a fantastic ascending wedge there, eh? It is a fantastic ascending wedge, but is I need to stick to my, that's on the, the five minute, but I need to stick to my principles. And this one is not above, I accident, and I say accidentally, it wasn't an accident. I was just not conscious. I, I wasn't cognizant enough and I got involved in um, Lily slightly below a milli last week. I think it was like 800,000 shares and it was just not as liquid as I would have liked it to be. And so it was a bit of a stressful trade and we, we volume exists for a reason, I'll put it that way. Bang. Although also I would say Lily on the daily, thank you for mentioning that, also looking like we're seeing sort of a, a flattish top situation around this 645. Uh, so that could be interesting as well, what we do here with Lily. Really good look, nice curl up on this stock. Thank you for mentioning that Dinglebot. So I will be keeping an eye out. Uh, uh, for Lily, should she decide she wants to add um, about 500,000 shares in volume over the course of time that we are in this midday. That's but good. for now, just in Citigroup, uh, keeping an eye on Meta, keeping an eye on NVIDIA, uh, the normal stocks I look at. How is, um, oh, Kira? Yeah, just got into this one right now. Let's talk a little bit about these two other small cap gappers that I neglected to mention. Shout out to Callum Mitchell Middle Miller for reminding me about this one. Brendo did mention KURA at the bottom, at the top of the show, I should say at the bottom. Uh, this one had a huge move in the pre. I mean, it is ridiculous. This one's running on uh, leukemia headline, guys. So it's one of those causes where, you know, I, I like to see these noble causes and uh, root for them. If it breaks 22, or sorry, 21 and a half, though, that's going to be the end of my trade. It did curl off VWAP, and it is attempting to do that 23 touch. So we'll see. That's that's the high of the day right now, 22.92. But it's got a whole 21 and a half here. Small size on this bad boy. The other one, MDAI. I neglected to mention this one as well. This one, tiny float, guys. 5.6 million shares. It's done about four and three quarters million shares of volume on the day. About 350,000 of those shares came in the last five minutes up 30 and a half percent with that 370 high but it had a better day yesterday today's definitely an inside day the low yesterday on this bad boy two dollars and ten cents the high four dollars so we're very much ensconced within yesterday's price action so we'll have to wait and see whether we can break out of that four dollar area or fail that two dollar and ten cent area so a couple of other small cap gappers to uh, let you know about on the day, we talked about PXLW, DWAC, RVSN, and Nexi. So we'll leave those ones at the moment and uh, focus on uh, KURA because uh, we're involved in that. Now, I should tell you that RVSN just took a big boy drop there. It, it's a, I don't know, man. Is it going to halt here? It just dropped off $23.37. It is tanking now, breaking below 20 on its way down to 19. Super spready. This one may halt, guys. Let's flip to the one and see what we're looking at here. Yeah, that is a big move down. 
Um, I don't know what the halt parameter exact, where the halt parameter exactly is. We'll have to wait and see. But the low on the day is 18 bucks. Obviously, that's not the pre-market low. That is after the bell low. So holding above that for now, can we hold 19? We'll have to wait and see whether this one uh, gives us a bounce back up. It was an awfully good name for multiple days. I don't even think this halted. I, I don't want to speak um, incorrectly here, but I don't remember RVSN halting. It could have. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what this one does. But yeah, big move down on it. Maybe we can look over here. RVSN, RVSN, NASDAQ name. Here it is. Yeah, breaking through this level, this is the concerning part because you don't want to see the making of a new low, right? Like how many days is this going to trend up before it gives up the ghost? That's crazy. Right? And that's the thing, right? Because we've been trending up for like over, I mean, two calendar weeks, not two trading weeks. Obviously, we talked about this in the middle of the month. Today's the last day of the month. So, well, where do we end up? Who, who knows? So RVSN, keeping an eye on that. Apple, I'm continuing to be flat on for the remaining 20% uh, that I have. It is uh, really consolidating sideways south of 189. Hasn't broken 189 on the retracement up. Could this be a prolonged dead cap bounce and then move back into 180? We know Apple reports on Thursday. Uh, we got several different headlines today. Uh, uh, one positive, one negative. Looks like Wed Bush and uh, UBS projecting between 400 to 600,000 deliveries of their Vision Pro in 2024, yet on the other side, we get uh, an analyst out of China basically saying that iPhone deliveries are gonna be down about 15% in 2024. Uh, Adair and I, you know, theorizing that he likely had some sort of contacts with Foxconn and Apple suppliers for him to be able to have that information. He's been doing this for 10 years or so, and he's known as, you know, one of the better, one of the better Apple analysts in the industry and has been relied on in the past. So we'll have to wait and see what uh, that brings. Keeping an eye here on KURA, um, don't want this to, to go against me. It's awfully volatile. Down into 22 bucks now. If this one breaks 21.50, we're out. Yeah, this this whole market is a nail biter over here. I feel like I'm in like a horror movie or a stressful football game or something. Go sports. But I mean, I did pull up IWM, which I found interesting. I traded IWM in the past. Of the ETFs, this is the one that I do occasionally dabble in, occasionally being the key word here. But Alison Mulcahy in the chat saying, IWM, roundy smiley face. I like that you called it by both names. I like that. Um, but also, I fully agree. Like, we had all this consolidation going on uh, from 10 to 11.20. Uh, so over an hour. Then we kind of make this nice push up. And then we're also getting into this area. We had some chop and turn earlier, that 198, 198.20. What makes me nervous is we go above VWAP, and then we kind of slink back down. I am waiting for another VWAP test. I want to stop. Bounce off view up beautifully, like a little trampoline, and then I'd be interested in getting involved. But I would not be staying involved past this 198.40, 198.50 area. Why? Because all this little roundy face, uh, or I guess frowny face slump to the downside, makes me incredibly nervous. I would definitely be getting out uh, by this area, but I do want to wait. Maybe we've, I, you could argue we've already kind of bounced off of view up here again, but I just want to be uh, really cautious here because these ETFs do move quickly and furiously. They move with a swiftness. And I okay. do not want to um, be standing in the middle of that freight train or that falling knife or what have you there. Uh, that being said, I do, I do think this looks pretty good. I just don't want to. I want to get all my little ducks in a row. Or all the beak what I guess not, that works too for beak waters. All the ducks in a row <laughs> before we set. Um, before the ducks come to the water. This analogy got very heavy handed. Also, um, I have Citigroup is, is hanging out here. Um, I, I'm happy with it right now. We made that 56.40, then we kind of uh, shoot back down a little bit, a couple cents. What I've noticed is Citigroup, it'll, what it'll do, it'll get to like a whole number. So at 56, we fought tooth, nail, and claw at that 56. Then we push above, then we fight again. 56.10, and you can tell because we have that wick up, then we come back down. 56.20, we took pretty handily, but then 56.30 was a bit of a struggle. 56.40, we're struggling. This is a very long winded way of me saying, I feel like for whatever reason, these um, 10 cent areas are making Citigroup pause a little bit. So I'm going to just going to be cautious around these levels. This is the type of trade I don't normally take, which is I will be staying in this until it's telling me not to. Uh, I don't really have any levels unless I looked on the daily. The biggest level I can kind of see is 56.9. So I'm going to be cognizant of that. And even then I have to go to the weekly for that level. Closing, I'm seeing uh, 
So I'm going to be cognizant of 5411, but we've got a while to go till we get there. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is I, you know, I don't usually hodl the hold on to dear life thing, but or hold on for dear life. But I am just going to probably wait in this trade. It is on my side chart and it's on my um, my book is on the side here as well. So I'm just going to be keeping an eye, keeping a lookout here for City Group. Uh, how is how is Apple looks like it's trying to go back down? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, well, you know, there's kind of like two sides to me right now: the day trader side and the <laughs> the swing trader side. The swing trader side doesn't want Apple to dip, but who uh, who cares about that? Right now, let's look at Tesla. A bit of a maybe double bottom here. I mean, you don't want to call this one out too quickly, but you get a hold up at that 192 and a fifth there uh, with a 192.19 low, and here we go again, bouncing into 194, coming into VWAP. Uh, the 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 right side of the W obviously a little bit higher than the left side, and that just shows some bullish momentum if this ends up being a double bottom. It's already up one and two thirds percent on the day. We did reject that upper uh, resistance level on the pivot, so we'll have to wait and see whether that one materializes, whether we break through that 196 and a half. That was kind of the high there that we made on the day. 196 and a third is technically the high. But yeah, that half dollar level is interesting. It breaks through VWAP here. Tesla is pumping Ooh. through 194 and a third here. A nice breakthrough VWAP without even looking back. Uh, beautiful, possible looking double bottom here on Tesla. Moving counter market now one and three quarter percent strong. Breaking through key levels. We'll have to wait and see whether we can get up into that 195. What we do at the whole dollar level. But Tesla getting some strength right now. Um, is the market getting strength? No, we're still, well, yeah, we'll see. We're still below VWAP, making lower highs and lower lows. Just looking at the market here to see if the market shifted, but it doesn't look like it did. So we'll, we'll just wanted to call that bad boy out. Let's go back and have a look at what we're doing hey, here on KURA. We got that uh, DCA there at the half dollar. Let's see if this one breaks. Uh, VWAP, that's the end of the trade on KURA, and we'll take, uh, we'll take a hit on it. So got in small position here, bigger position there. So whether or not you know this one holds VWAP and continues to make the higher lows and higher highs that it started doing at around 10.30 uh, remains to be seen. But awfully strong uh, on the day is KURA, and it was, you know, this one could have blown up some accounts in the, the pre-market because the way this moved, in the pre-market, this tore off faces. I just want to show you real quick here what the pre-market action was like on this bad boy. The, the, uh, the news hit there right at 7 a.m. And we closed out yesterday at $18 and two-thirds. This one skyrocketed within 15 minutes to $26.5. And, and then it gave up the entire move, coming back into yesterday's close, holding up at that $18 and a quarter. And then we broke through VWAP. Uh, to make that high of the day after the bell high, which right at that $23 level, $22.92. But this could be a, a lower high and a double double top, in which case it's awfully bearish. I was looking here at the higher lows, bouncing off VWAP, and that's what kind of got me interested in it. But we'll have to break through that 22 and a half really here to confirm that we are headed to the high side. Again, this one breaks through 21, uh, yeah, that 21 and a half, 2140 area, which is where VWAP is. I'm ending the trade. There, let's uh, move back into AAPL, see what this one's doing. Apple's getting a bounce here, man. It looked like it wanted to curl, but it looks like it wants to make a move into 189. It crosses 189. I'll stop out for the remaining 20% uh, that I have on this bad boy. Uh, what is everybody looking at? Um, throw it in the chat right now. I'm looking at my side chart here to see if there's anything, or my, my watch list to see if there's anything uh, doing outlandish moves or outlandish volume. I'm not seeing anything right now, Adara. Nothing that we already haven't talked about. Yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah, it's a lot of the same old players. It will be for the rest of this week. So we have five Meg 7s reporting oh, yeah. uh, this week. Also of note, an another thing reporting is um, a name that was once involved in a Apple-related bet with Sharif on the last Apple earnings, Starbucks. Oh, yeah. Starbucks reporting um, tonight. And, Star ooh, hello, Starbucks. Ooh, well. <laughs> I made this. I did the, the I got all excited here. Look at this 93.95. We had this uh, this is where we had consolidation earlier. We push above it pretty handily here. So I think that's certainly of note. I would probably wait uh, before getting involved for myself. But look at these. You know we, we had this move down, then right off open, we pop up, and then we make a higher high, higher low. Mm. Uh, nice push to the upside for Starbucks. Also thank you, uh, Eugene Michael. Welcome to Trader TV Live. Uh, thank you so much.
for your support here. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, basically Starbucks an interesting look. I also want to look at Boeing ahead of its earnings tomorrow morning. I think that call will be fascinating. Do you have Netflix? I do, yeah. Okay. You got to watch the case against Boeing. You were, tell you were talking yeah, about I this this morning. I Brendo, I told the big kahunas this morning, I told Sean and Neil, you got to watch it. Okay. It adds so much context to what we're seeing right now. It's not an unusual situation for them. I mean, everybody remembers what happened in 2019. Do you remember what happened with the Ethiopia Air and Line Air in Indonesia? Yeah, I when saw. When they dropped yeah. out of the sky. So it shows you what Boeing did at, thereafter and how they tried to hide it, this, that, and the other. I, I don't mean it's a hit piece. It's not really a hit piece. They try to show you the good side of the company. They try to bring in older employees to show you how much they really cared about quality control. And then there was a shift in the company, like everything else, you know, in the kind of like the 21st century. Profits, profits, profits. We got to please Wall Street rather than trying to keep people safe. Watch it. Trust me. Oh, no, I appreciate it's that yeah. recommend. And I, I like documentaries. I'm, I'm into yeah, that. And I always... Good. good. And I, find, I found the Boeing thing really fascinating. I also, I was going to say, too, uh, what I've been... I saw, um, and I was kind of looking, you know, I, looking at uh, research and, and graphics and whatnot on yeah. Boeing. And they actually, somewhere, I need to find this, but there was a graphic where they kind of documented Boeing stock changes amidst all its various scandals huh. going up to this scandal. So if I can find that, it was pretty interesting. Um, I believe it might, that one might have been from Reuters. But, um, yeah, I mean, looking at the Boeing uh, stock, we we fell from the sky here. Hanging out pre-market, pretty flat, around 204. Swoop. We open, fall to the downside, lower highs, lower lows. We tried to curl up. It looks like the, the sellers were not a fan. Um, and we also had a bit of a candle action to talk about candlestick patterns. Look at this. We had... A, Sort of a sort of an uptrend, and then we have that big. Uh, not it's not. I'm not going to say it's a gravestone doji because it's not. We did have a small uh, body there. Hey, we did have that big move to the upside though, uh, and then we kind of petered out. And that candle movement, I think you appreciate that, was the same reason I got out of Citigroup because I do need to address this. Looks like we might be curling back up, but I saw this. Look, look at this candle. We got to 56.40. We had that uh, big wick to the upside, and then we fell to the downside. I did not like what I was seeing there, Sam. I am. And I got out at that 56, uh, 25. Looks like now, it looks like it might have just been a temporary bottom, but I saw this swiftness with which you moved down yes. in combination with that candle. And the balance of the evidence, I decided to leave. Vin saying too soon. Um, Zion Lala saying we were supposed to join the dollar club on Citigroup. 57 is in the cooking. I, I agree. Oh. I like that remix. That was a fun <laughs> remix. Yeah, I, I really should. I should have stayed in this one, but you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to have regrets on it. I, I got out for a reason. I need to be cognizant of that fact. Um, and you know what? I can always get back in another dip. It's not gonna be the dollar club move. It's not gonna have the same move. But I just think you know I'm trying to trust my instincts, and that was my instinct at that point, for right or wrong here. Fair. Um, and so yeah, I mean, in terms of other trades, I do want to get involved, but I also don't want to be. Um, too hasty here and I don't want to get involved just for the sake of it. NVIDIA curling up in a way that's kind of interesting to me though. And I'll switch because I have the three minute in my side chart which is what initially uh, piqued my interest here in this one right now. Higher high, higher low. Uh, right, sit, starting at that 1054 area. We had a bit of a downtrend, this uh, sort of top and tail candle. Then we start moving up, we start curling up here. And I think um, I definitely would be interested in taking profit around that should i get into this mind you that six uh 33 ish area because that was where we had tons of uh consolidation earlier but i think this vwap recovery is very slick and i think the higher highs higher lows look is interesting i want to be cognizant of my point of entry because i don't have a solid point of entry for this yet i don't think we've dipped quite yet i don't want to get involved too high but i'm going to be keeping my eye on an nvidia entry uh iwm i have an eye on but i don't really have a point of entry for this yet um we're still kind of hanging out here um we we did kind of curl back around that that at 198 20 area i was being cognizant of so i'll just keep it up my head and if we have another view bounce i'm not going to say no uh, dara omd pre-market mover uh you know how i feel about these um pre the breaking of the pre-market high and we're right there on omd this one was about it halted excuse me, at that 186. Guys, let me bring in uh, the, the side chart on this one because it was awfully close to breaking that pre-market high. And I put it, I put my alert a smidge below um, the pre-market high so I could be alerted to its uh, ascent, O-N-M-D. Here it is. And here, here's where, I, sorry, that was yesterday's pre-market high. Okay, I see. That's why I alerted because I had this one from yesterday and I put the pre-market high at that 210 area for the break of 2, 218, and then I, re I didn't remove it. 
So this one got off the schneid. It was red on the day. Yesterday's closing price was a buck 37, and it just shot up Adara for no reason there, right at 11.40, so about running for about 14 minutes or so. Uh, let's put in the ticker on this bad boy. And it got awfully close into touching yesterday's high on the day, and that was the pre-market high. That was at 5.45 a.m. We hadn't come into that 218 area. It got to 210 and rejected. It's coming back down now into 180. So be, be careful on this one. Spready. Um, and it looks like, you know, there was some, some bamboozlement there. We'll see if it ends up breaking uh, the yesterday's high. I'm going to put another alert there at 220. If it, if, it, if it alerts, then we'll really be involved in this one will give it more attention but the reason i didn't jump into this one is because the break of the pre-market high was from yesterday and well that wasn't what i was looking for all right apple still doing the dance here at 188 and two-thirds nothing to report there uh still about 20 or 30 pennies out of the money right now on KURA small position looking for a hold of vwap and the continuation of higher lows and higher highs several beak wetters there to uh print or trigger if we get, you know, that illiquid move up. Now, with these ones, I, I've, I've mentioned this in the past, you know, sometimes they don't spend all that long at their profit-taking levels, and so the best idea is to put beak wetters out there in case you're not watching it and you're trading other things for them to get filled. So that's what I've done here with KURA. We'll have to wait and see. If it breaks view up, that's the end of the trade. Sorry to interrupt you. I just want to mention ONMD because it really started pumping there. Yeah, I mean, that 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 one turned on. And especially when these small caps move like that in the midday, I think it's right? always worth noting as well. So I do appreciate you bursting in with that. Um, NVIDIA, I was like, oh, maybe we have a dip, but it looks like we might be kind of breaking out of this trend a little bit. So I will be cautious of that. Um, IWM, I tried to get filled on, but then uh, the spread was just too spready mm. for me at that point. It was like, you know, a thick peanut butter spread, and I just could not get involved in that trade. Uh, weird analogy time. Also, yeah, Apple is fascinating because that one does not seem to know what it would like to do with its life. Like, I was noticing that in the chart, it looks like it does want to go down, but it's taking its sweet time in getting there. It is, right? Yeah, like, it's like, like look, it's just hanging out. It is, but, <laughs> and, but the thing is, it's putting in higher lows. So that's my concern. That's I mean, true. as much as I want it to curl and reject off 189, as much as I'm seeing what I'm seeing, which is higher low, higher low, higher low. Now, we have a flat top south of 189, but this isn't one of those ones where I'm like, flat top breakout, flat top breakout. No, it's a big boy move down. And so this is not uh, a continuation pattern. If anything, this is going to be a reversal because what preceded it was a move down. Flat top breakout is, we know, a continuation pattern. And so you know, I'm, I don't want to start seeing patterns for the sake of seeing patterns. they got to be valid in the context in which they arise. If they're not, then they're just, you know, regular price action noise. And yeah. remember remember when we did the week on patterns, we said, just because we're looking at something, we think we see a pattern, not everything is going to be a pattern. Yeah. Right? We, sometimes there's confirmation bias. Right? And that's kind of uh, the thing there. So trying not to get too excited here, thinking Apple's going to curl back down to 188. But again, if it breaks 189, I'm holding holding one-fifth of the position that we had, and we'll take a, we'll take a little bit of a loser, 20-some-odd penny loser there on one-fifth. So no big deal. Big Kyle Burdett has shorted Amazon at 160. Uh, did you confirm that with the Amazonian? No, I'm kidding. Uh, the, uh, the Katina man hit the fail on that one. He's a good, good trade. Okay. So, he was, Katina Man was going to go long 160, and then he changed his mind there. So he likes that uh, trade bit, Kyle Burdett. So shout out to you. Uh, Kyle also saying NQ short from 17.650 against the previous support on the five-minute chart. That's a great look there, Kyle. Um, a lot of wicks into 17.650, and all of them have rejected so far. So hope you print on that. Jonathan Canny, sometimes we want to see a pattern. I know. I want to see it too. Trust me, Jonathan. I mean, you're not on your own on that one. But, uh, you know, confirmation bias is a real, is a real thing. Nimit, what's your VWAP on ONMD? Uh, all right, I'll tell you in a second. It is right at 150, uh, Nimit, so hope that helps. Top VOIP, kindly have a look at ARDK. No idea what that is. Let's pull it up, ARDK. ARDK. ARDX, he says. Okay, ARDX, sure. I've heard of ARDX. Yeah, of course. That's a small cap gapper. Yeah. We've seen this one before. I thought it was ARDK, and then he, he corrected himself. 22.8 million share float. Let's bring in the side chart over here. Start having a look at the price action. Ooh. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not only uh, Obi that can do these French accents. <laughs> ARDX. Let's, um, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's go to the half. Ooh, wow. My God, this is a great-looking small-cap gapper. Ooh. 
Um, it's not a small cap gap, Rodera. It's a 2.11 billion market uh, cap. So Never mind. This isn't small cap. Yeah, this is like mid cap. Yeah, so this has been a fantastic looking chart from October onwards. Jeez Louise. Um, on the day, though, we are we are headed down on the day, right? We're down 3.5% top VOIP. Yesterday was a good day for it. From 9.30, from the 9.30 low to the 4 p.m. close, we were up 4.84% yesterday. So yesterday was a good day for it, like the previous day and many, many, most of these days. Today, though, getting some support. Look at that, bouncing off the 50 period like nobody's business there on the half an hour chart, 9.05 low, 9.11 right now. For me to really get interested in this one way or another, it's got to give up the ghost at 9, that whole dollar area, or it's got to trend above... Uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a break above yesterday's highs, which I don't really see at the moment. So I've got nothing on ARDX on the day, but it's a great looking chart when you look at uh, the half an hour, the, the bigger picture. Fantastic looker there. Let's go back to KURA. Nothing doing here. Apple, nothing doing here. Uh, very stagnant uh, for my trades at the moment. Yeah, I feel like um, these things, like I feel like a lot of today, it's just things will be stagnant and then they'll move like crazy and then they'll like hang out again. Right. Like Apple was a really good example. Flew to the downside. You and Sean <laughs> were taking beak waters left, right, and center. Um, profit takers galore. And then it kind of chilled out. It just kind of like floated at the surface yeah. there. Um, speaking of, I, I leaned in way too hard there. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, mega cap trades, I got into an NVIDIA long. Um, I basically, as I said, I was looking for dips and I was watching for areas that we were hanging out and holding and I liked what we were doing at 631.50. I got in, we just got out, sorry for the clapping. Um, this is this happened live, which is not always the case. Really small position size, I do have to say. I got in really small in this. I was gonna reload. Should we see any, you know, uh, I guess, reason for that, confirmation for that, but we didn't even end up having time. It just swooped up. Please just punch, I have to say. Please just punch coming back in here. Um, you know what? And I, I just basically trying not to beat myself up too hard for getting out of Citigroup too early. I think that was a lot of it. I think it would have been easier to just kind of, you know, bamboozle my way back in there or try to revenge trade. But I was like, you know what, Adara, you did leave for a reason. That reason may have been ill-conceived, but it, it, it did exist, right? So basically just trying to find other trades to look at. Uh, the grass is hopefully greener um, on the other side or in, you know, in the rest of these markets. and. And I'm basically, long story short, just happy with how that ended up um, working out. In NVIDIA, what else do I have my eye on? Tesla. I have not gotten into the Cybertruck today yet. So I may, I know at the first a couple times I started saying that, I know you would always think I was talking about a real Cybertruck. So I felt really badly. I was jealous as hell. I was accidentally <laughs> gaslighting Sharif with like the Cybertruck. I was like kept behind like the fence and like, you know, I had to look at it from afar. And then you're riding in the Cybertruck. I'm like, what the hell, bro? Bring it over here. Uh, no, but of course, alas, it was not to be. Alas, <laughs> there we go. But um, like, you know, maybe next time they'll let you open the door and then the next, next time maybe you can, can sit in Maybe we can see inside of it. Let's, Let's just start with that. But the opening I mean? the like, door could lead you to seeing inside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, look, I'll take, I'll settle for just looking at the interior so far. Right? Oh, so they lower the window. Okay. Yeah, I know. Give there me something. All right, we'll talk more about that and much more and some of these trades when we are back from uh, the real deal. Okay, well, Ram Ram has now informed me that we must keep going. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about this KURA -K trade, Ram Ram, if we can go to the chart, because it's back on its way up into 22 bucks. I've got a beak wetter there at 22 and a fifth, and then 22 and a third, and then 22 and a half. I'm trying to put all the beak wetters there because this is a bit of a bamboozer. We are ready for Neil though. The real deal with Neil starts now. Today's lesson, real deal, is going to be short squeezes. Why? Because there's been a few of them recently. Uh, it's been a hot minute, but it seems like some of these are going to be back into play. So for anybody that doesn't know what a squeeze is or what a short squeeze is, essentially it's a situation where a lot of people are betting that a stock will go down. And then when it has to go up, when it goes up, they got to cover. And then you get cascading pressure on a stock upward, because there's not a lot of available liquidity for people to cover their shares. So what's the first condition of a short squeeze? I mean, you got to be able to know that there's actually people that are short the stock. I know it's simple, but you have to start with the basics. And I just pulled trade IDs up here, and the example is going to be Lucid, because Lucid is squeezing right now, uh, at least has been the last couple of days. Uh, so you check the short float. Double digits are good. 
Over 20% is, I'd say, very good. Things that get into the 40 and 50% range are insane and have a lot of potential. In and of itself, a high short float does not mean that a stock is going to squeeze. That's not how it is. You need some things and some catalysts to get the stock to start going. But it is a start. You're not going to get a short squeeze without people uh, looking to cover. But there is another way a stock can go in a similar fashion, which has to do with the available shares in the float. So even though you might have a low short float, you might just have a float sometimes that is very small. Uh, let's say you have a low float name, only one or two million shares out there. Even if it's not a huge percentage of it short, there's just a simple lack of liquidity. So when the stock goes up, there's a lot of pressure as there's nobody to punch out on uh, for the people trying to cover. And they got to buy back, and that means there needs to be a seller. And if there's no available shares for either reason, whether it's too many shorts or whether there's a lack of liquidity, both these things are going to, one of those things is going to be required for a squeeze. How do you make profit off it? Well, as stated, if you need people to be short for something to go up, the other thing that you need is for people to start covering. And if you look at any stock, and I'm using Lucid as an example, I don't want anybody that's invested or loves Lucid to at me here, but if you look at any of these names that have high short floats, you're typically going to find something like this where the stock is just trend down forever and ever and ever, and every single pop look, looks like an absolute golden short, and oppor short opportunity, which is exactly the case here. So what causes something to start squeezing? You need people to look for reasons to cover. Maybe it's a consolidation bottom, a double bottom in here back in June 2023, and then it starts going up, but you don't even get a parabolic move. Now, what happened recently in Lucid, I think, gives you a good example of it. Look at all the red. You've got at least two or three weeks worth of downward pressure on the stock into a double bottom. That's a ton of pressure. The other thing that happened here is you actually got a bit of a catalyst. Not directly. I mean, there were, yeah, there's some news around Lucid, but let's be real. Tesla had earnings and tanked. Lucid went with it. So did a lot of the EV names. Tesla made a bottom. Uh, and then you had a big move to the upside. So you did have a double bottom. You had a bit of a catalyst in that Tesla made a big bounce, putting upward pressure on some of the EV, EV names. And then you had a break to the upside. Well, woohoo! Uh, if you were able to catch that first day, great opportunities for longs. It started squeezing. How do you take advantage? Okay, well, people might cover at a double top. So they might cover there. People are going to cover at key price levels. But once it's already gone, what are you supposed to do with it? I want to talk to you about day two type plays and a couple of the reasons why this double top turns into what I think is an easy squeeze entry, the upside. One, anybody that saw the first day of buying back explosively that short is saying, will it continue? If it does, I might want to cover my short. People can be short at $15, $10, all those prices and everything in between. But what happened at the end of the day is key here. Look at the volume, creep back up. So it pulls back, lucid, squeeze names will do that. If they go up explosively, they can come back explosively as well. You got this push, and then when it got back to the highs, you had increased volume at the top again. So lots of strength up at the top, holding higher lows. Holding the trend on good volume. If that volume's not good and you aren't having people buy en masse up at those tops, late money's the money that holds overnight. That's going to be a key. So that's what you get. You end up closing and then opening right around the same top. If it's all the way down at three, it's got work to do to get up to that double top. It's a breakout entry because that's where a lot of people are putting stops. It's an obvious area for it to go. And if you want to look one more step out in the future, what would I be looking for next? Same pattern. Can, can Lucid hold on to 360 to 380 today? Can it get back up above $4, which is the 50 period, which could cause another bit of a squeeze? Were it to take out something like a 530, I think that could be an explosive level. I want there to be buyers above scaring the you-know-what out of short sellers. So you've got to have those factors in there. I always like to have a target. I want to go from A to B, but once it hits B, I want to think about B to C, C to D, all that good stuff. Take it in steps. It's going to be, there are going to be pullbacks. There are going to be explosive moves in either direction. You don't want to get caught holding the bag thinking every single squeeze is going to be a game stop. But there's a couple of other things that you, got, you can consider here. Everything is relative. It's all well and good to say, okay, well, we know Lucid has a good short float and things like Upstart have over 40% and Carvana has a good short float. 
but I'll give you something that you don't usually uh, think about, a name with single-digit short flow. Now, SMCI is a 30-plus billion dollar market cap company. Now, larger cap, mid and larger cap companies don't always tend to have more than 2 3% short flow can be a good amount. This is 9%. So 9% short float. It also has many cat on every, every single day, some of the chip names have a catalyst being a chip name associated with AI. Uh, that can be one. And it's shown you explosive movement in the past. So one of the things that you've got to consider is it's all relative. Tesla will go crazy because there's a lot of people that short it in options, so it'll get like a gamma squeeze. Something like Lucid, it's simple. The raw shares are shorted. GameStop, it's simple. SMCI, 9% is gigantic when this stock is doing triple ups um, in 2023 and when it's doing essentially almost a double up in just one month, and then it gives good guidance. This... On 5% short float, this is a bit of a squeeze. That's why you get it moving 20% on revised guidance. And then a day like today, where it's going to have its earnings and everyone's expecting it to do the same, well, the volatility is going to be absolutely through the roof. But why I want to show it to you is remember what I just talked about, where you've got to have shorts covering. Shorts need to have a reason to cover for it to make that next leg up. What did Lucid do? Lucid broke out a new high. SMCI, in attempting to open breaking out the post-market gap, it failed that level. If you don't put the shorts to pressure in the open market, there's not much of a squeeze that can happen. And it's a weird thing to say. Like, I would have been more exciting buying SMCI breaking out the top than I would have been trying to pick a bottom. Because one of them fits with the squeeze narrative, and the other one is just trying to catch a technical dip buy, which if you had it, great. Congratulations to you. So SMCI does fall into this category, but you've got to always remember, catalyst is a part of it, short float is a part of it, shorts actually covering, and running to the exit at the same time is a very, very large component that you need to fill. So when that doesn't happen, note that these names can and will pull back really significantly. I don't know how many times when everybody wanted Carvana to go a million times in the last few months, it just wouldn't because it wouldn't take that next level up. So try to remember, you've got to be taking out tops, and there have to be buyers incrementally to get that type of a squeeze. Obviously, the trend is going to be your friend a lot of times, so you want to see it stair-stepping to the upside. Everything about SMCI would have pointed to, on an earnings beat, this could be a runner. But it's actually given up 10% because the buyers couldn't take out the top. So anybody that was shorting it or still holding shorts, they put their stops at okay if it holds above the aftermarket high or if it breaks a pre-market high, none of those stops got run, and you've got to factor that in. It's not always just about finding that name with the high short float. You need to see it take out tops. Can Lucid take out this high tomorrow? I don't know. But if it's unable to make fresh highs and hold higher lows and all that good stuff, then I don't need to be involved every single day. But while the squeeze is there, you want to take advantage of it. So you know, make sure you do your homework. Know what has a short float. Know what has a low float. Make sure it has some kind of a catalyst. You'd like to see the extra volume. And our stop's getting run. What would you do if you were short that stock? How would you be feeling? Would you feel comfortable about it? Would you have stops or looking at potential stop areas? If there's nothing that would have gotten you out of short, then... Why would a stock squeeze? So make sure you're looking for the right things. That's the real deal. Short floats can be, short squeezes can be very, very lucrative and a lot of fun. You just have to make sure it actually squeezes. Hang there, because I like how he finished off with a dramatic effect there. Shout out to Neil. Like he said, not everything that we're going to see is going to be a breakout, a squeeze. Not every chart pattern that we think we see is actually a chart pattern. Not every gap we see initially is going to be an initiation gap. Uh, confirmation bias in trading is a real thing. Shout out to Neil. As informative and insightful as always, Adara. Let's, uh, let's get back to the lesson right now. Nothing really to update on either position of mine. Both the same, uh, both in the same spot at the moment. So let's talk a little bit today about continuation gaps. Yesterday we talked a lot about initiation gaps, the gap that starts the uptrend. Pardon me, let me just uh, load up my lesson. There it is. 
Um, today we're talking about once we've already initiated that uptrend or downtrend, there is could be there could be another gap coming um, in the midst of that trend, J usually during a consolidation phase within the overall larger trend. And that is the type of gap we're talking about today. Again, it's called a continuation gap. Let's get to it. So the characteristics of this type of gap are quite simple. Um, you should be looking for lower volume than you got on the initiation or slash breakaway gap. So continuation gaps are often accompanied by lower trading volumes compared to breakaway gaps. This reflects the temporary slowdown in market activity during the consolidation phase. And like I mentioned, you typically see these continuation gaps break away from a consolidation phase within the overall larger trend, uptrend or downtrend, doesn't make a difference. You're also looking, surprise, surprise, for consolidation pattern. So continuation gaps are typically found within consolidation patterns such as flags, pennants, triangles, you name it, whatever other type of pattern can give you that consolidation uh, look before the eventual breakout. These patterns indicate a brief pause in the trend before it continues. And lastly here, the characteristic specific to continuation gaps is price action confirmation. So traders often look for confirmation through subsequent price action after the continuation gap, ensuring that the trend indeed resumes in the expected direction. So in this particular case, when we have an initiation gap to the upside, then we have you know a prolonged move up, and then we get that sideways move, right? Where we the price continues to consolidate, not breaking up or down. What we need here, obviously, for the continuation gap to be valid is an, a break above the consolidation level, not below, but above. And then the price action that follows from that has to be up as well. If we break away from the consolidation gap to the upside and then fail below it, it's a failed gap. So you need to see subsequent price action that jives with the overall thesis. Any questions or comments, Adair? You know, I think I think too. What was really helpful for me was to realize, like, you do you need a period of consolidation. Like I was saying earlier, I was looking at Microsoft. I was like, oh, we had a gap, and then you put it out like very rightfully yeah. so that this is kind of a common gap, right? Like Microsoft has been in this massive uptrend on the daily, so just any old gap will not do on this one. Um, and what I liked to it was realizing that these gaps do come in threes. They come as a, a triplet. You will get your initiation gap. Then eventually after some consolidation, you'll get your um, your runaway and then you will finally get your exhaustion gap. So I think, I, I think that really helped me to understand how these gaps work. And it's not just like, oh, because I see a gap on Microsoft that, that a gap is present. So I appreciate, um, I do appreciate you yes. bringing that up because I think that's really important to note as well is you can't have continuation without a pattern that began in the first place. Dang. Absolutely. Uh, guys, two pieces of news real quick here. GMBL halted to the upside, up 36.5%. GMBL halted to the upside as well. NVVE halted to the upside, up 97.77%. A lot of sevens in there. <laughs> so two halts right now on small cap gappers, GMBL and NVVE. Thank you, Nimit, for... Um, alerting me to the GMBL halt. All right, moving on. How to ID continuation gaps, Ram Ram. We're gonna talk about how to ID them there. So a volume analysis has to take place. Like I mentioned earlier, continuation gaps, sorry, um, that's, I'm looking at the wrong thing, my, my mistake. So we're looking at chart patterns, excuse me. So continuation gaps are often associated with specific chart patterns like I mentioned, like bull flags, bear flags, pennants, symmetrical triangles, you name it. Recognizing these pattern aids in identifying a potential continuation gap. So oftentimes once we get the breakaway gap or the initiation gap to the upside or downside or whatever it's gonna be, we typically have a sideways consolidation. That sideways consolidation can take the form or the shape of a continuation pattern. So oftentimes we wanna look for that. So if we had a breakaway gap that looked like a bull flag, where you had you know, a big pull and then a sideways consolidation, what we're looking for there is the break above the pennant, above the flag to the high side, okay? So how to ID them? The first thing is we're looking at the chart pattern and we're looking for continuation patterns. Second thing, we're looking for a volume decline. 
observe a decline in trading volume during the gap, indicating a temporary reduction in market participation. All you need to know here is that you're making a comparison between the continuation gaps volume and the initiation gaps volume or the breakaway gaps volume. And in the continuation gap should have a lower volume than the initiation gap. That's all we're really looking for there. And then third and finally, Adira, price support and resistance levels. Continuation gaps often occur near support or resistance levels, emphasizing the significance of these levels in identifying potential continuation patterns. So much like we talked about yesterday, when we have that, the initiation gap, typically it's breaking above what was a prolonged period of consolidation, or sorry, a prolonged period of resistance or support, whatever the case may be, whether it's a long or a short, and it's breaking up above that level or below that level. That's what we're looking for here as well. And that's kind of part and parcel with the continuation pattern because once you break above that consolidation area, you're continuing the trend. So those are the three ways, well, not only ways, but three ways that you can help ID continuation gaps. Yeah, and I think part of it too, because um, I was asking like, how do you know how significant a continuation gap is going to be? How long is does the consolidation have to go on for it? I know what you said that I thought was really helpful is basically the idea is, same with all these patterns, the more touches you have a level of a level, the more significant it will be when we break out of it. So I guess the longer it is, if we keep, you know, curling at this level of resistance, then we see that big swoop above, that'll be a little bit more significant than if we're there, if we consolidate for a couple days and then we have a continuation gap. So I think, um, I think that's interesting as well. And I think that's something I, I definitely learned today that hey, I think is of note. Hit it, Katina, man. Google how many dollars in the money. <laughs> One, and a quarter. One and a quarter dollars in the money. Katina Man taking Google short, still holding on to that position. So if you're following along with the Katina Man, he's still holding his Google short. All yeah. right. Let's uh, go on to the last uh, part there. The trading strategies for these continuation gaps. How are we going to trade these bad boys? Well, once a continuation gap is identified, traders can implement specific strategies to capitalize on the anticipated resumption in the existing trend. So the first thing is obviously trend following. Use continuation gaps as entry points for trend following strategies aiming to capitalize on the resumption of the prevailing trend. So we talked a lot about this before. Um, you know, personally, I hate chasing price action. So if you get that big move up initially, uh, you know, I'm going to look for a pullback or at least a sideways consolidation to prove to me what the levels are. So this is a great entry point if you're swing trading and you've missed that initial initiation gap and it's run up and not really giving you an opportunity for the pullback. This is where you could possibly get in uh, because you know that there is still more upside because we still haven't gotten to that exhaustion gap yet, which we'll be talking about tomorrow. So if you miss the initiation gap and then you have a sideways period of consolidation, your entry could be on that continuation gap as well. And then last but not least, pattern recognition. Combine the identification of continuation gaps with the recognition of continuation patterns, which enhances the reliability of the signal. If you haven't, if you don't know what continuation patterns are, go back to the week when Adara and I did that, uh, did the, the lessons on patterns. We talked a lot about continuation patterns and what to look for. So in, in this particular case, it will even be more reliable of a signal if it is accompanied by a continuation pattern and then you get a continuation gap. Any questions or comments, Adara? You know, I think I think just I think what's what's cool too is like you you know not trading against these patterns, right? Like using right. these. I think that's why the trend following thing is really important because it's like if we've been in this period of consolidation, especially if we you know we use the example Apple 200 right. or Nvidia 600. If yes. you although Nvidia 600 is weirdly long gone now, um, but <laughs> what a world. Yeah, but basically, exactly. the idea that if you do have a breakout of a key level at this um, specifically, you know, we had some consolidation, then you break out of it with a gap um, up or down, I think that's certainly going to be um, uh, extra key. And I think, you know, keeping in mind, don't, maybe maybe don't go against the grain and something like that, right? So I think I like that they do include trend following. And, you know, I did say, like, up or down because, at like, you know, they are fractal. They're, yes. Or they, the equivalent of being fractal, a word yes. that I just felt like yeah. using here, right? So basically the idea, you can use it um, bearish or bullish. The patterns do not judge. They do not have prejudices. Right. Um, it will, whatever way it gaps, it shall gap. Yes. And Dara, I have to talk about AMD, the Katina Please man do. alerting me to the, the blood 
that is being shed right now on my friend Amd. So, shout out to Lisa Sue and her blue jacket. It is coming back down now, down over 2% on the day having lost about three dollars and a quarter it is coming into 174 fast and furious here does it hold the whole dollar level so we're well, gonna have to wait here i personally would have been more interested in that 175 level as support but that level came and went like it was nobody's business now we're looking at the 174 level for possible support right now we're gonna have to watch amd while neil was dropping hot lines on the uh the real deal with neil AMD flew up into that 635. It is now right back down at 630. So AMD, uh, sorry, Nvidia lost $5 in a matter of 15 minutes here. Big move down on the microchips. Big move down here on the Fuge. The Fuge is giving up the ghost. It is at 17.6 right now on the NQ. This is an important level here for the NQ. We're printing on this Apple short, but looks like Apple's exhausted in its uh, move down because it's not... AMD is not stopping either, the Katina man said, and it's not. I was focusing here on NVIDIA. AMD is on the way down 173. We broke through 174 with the swiftness to take Adara's line there. I'm looking at my blotter. I don't see anything right now coming in for AMD. Go ahead, Katina man. Uh, the Katina man put this in the chat, arm short 72. Okay, and arm right now is at 71.75, so he's printing 25 pennies in the money on that bad boy. So make sure you're looking at the chat as well if you're interested in the Katina Man's trades. He's often updating his trades in that bad boy. Meta is absolutely flunking. It is on its way to 400. We were at 406 and a third. Now we're barely holding on to 400. 482, technically the low. The market is on the way down, but we're gonna have to watch a few here because we know what these 100 point levels bring uh, as a possible level of support. We're below it right now, but do we do, do the wick shimmy dance from the top or the bottom ramp, man? Uh, I was trying to get away with it a little bit there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to watch right now what uh, the future is doing at 17.6. We're blowing through 17.6 right now to the downside. Looks like Big Kyle Burdett. Dump it, he yells. He's also a dollar club Amazon. Shout out to Big Kyle Burdett there on the print for, for this move down. Tesla on the way down, everything on the way down, ex of course, except Apple, right? Because we're in that one. And that one's going to find support all <laughs> of a sudden. Uh, the other one we're involved in, KURA, still doing nothing. Yeah, Apple has been um, a bit of a a bit of a, a bad boy, a bit of a prodigal son here of the Meg Seven. The rest of them are going down, and Apple's like, I went down earlier, so I'm just gonna hang out for now. Hopefully, though, for the sake of that short, I hope it does continue to go down for you. Nvidia, I was watching. I was like, we were actually holding just above uh, 6.29 in sort of a peculiar way, uh, and I say was because we definitely flushed out below that. We're about a dollar below. But why I like that level is we had some consolidation there earlier. We had that beautiful bounce to the upside, and then we had a big rejection at that 6.34. So I think certainly to be something to be keep an eye on if you are in that Nvidia. Uh, short earlier or long leading up to that. Felicitation to you. I tried to get one of these little pops here. Happy it worked out. But yeah, I don't honestly don't have a trade right now. This market is super volatile. I'm just trying to be cognizant of what is going on um, here. Citigroup, congrats to anyone who stayed in the Citigroup because I, I did leave the Citigroup. Um, you know, I was talking to Sharif about this and Sharif was saying to, um, you know, trading, you're always going to be upset about something. <laughs> so today I'm upset because I abandoned this trade, but also, you yes. know, what? I'm happy I, I stuck with, with whatever my instinct was here. And my instinct was, I didn't like this candle. I didn't like this rejection. I didn't like the swiftness, to use that word yet again, mm. uh, with which we fell off that 56.4. Um, and we were, you know, you know what I mean? I might've been a little bit hastier than I needed to be, but I'm just going to brush that dirt off my shoulders and keep on going. Um, looking at IWM still, because I, I was I was trying to scalp this one in and out of these kind of 10 penny moves, but I, every time I try to get filled, it just does not happen for me. I do like the idea of this being a short, but I would want to be out of this for sure by that, sorry, I said that really aggressively, <laughs> that 197.50, uh, 197.40 area, because this chop and churn and then that move back up, uh, scurred. It would make me very scurred Scurred. indeed, I have to say. Also, Meta coming yeah, back into 400. 400. That one got uh, taken off the close friends Instagram story, if you know what I mean, to use a very specific Instagram reference there. Removed from the close friends if you were in long and Meta. We broke down from this area that we bounce off at the open now. Holy I mean, cow, Meta. This is not a Meta move. Long? I, would I take the 400 long? I would wait. You know what I would do? I would take 401 long. If we see recovery at 401, okay. why? Because that's where he bounced up earlier, and that oh. would, and then I would take profit at uh, 403, 
9404, and then I'd save a piece for the dream. I see. Okay, fair, fair. I, I respect that. I wet my beak on a couple of Apple uh, descents here because Apple's not descending in the way that the other uh, Mag 7 names are descending because it already pooped the bed earlier in the day. So uh, it, it, I was going to say something, but I, I refrained myself from saying. I was going to give um, an, a synonym for poop in the bed, but it, it refers to a person. I'm going to tell you off camera later. And then, do. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's really funny. It, it was said before on the show, oh. but I find it to be a little, you know, so. We'll, we'll keep everybody guessing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm absolutely eyeing this 400 level on Meta. I mean, look, we didn't really break 400 for that long. How long have we been above 400 on Meta, uh, Adara here? How many days? The Katina Man is just like wowing up a storm over the ass. So we broke Meta 400 yesterday. So we've only been above 400 for a day or so. That's it. So it's not really like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this possible Meta 400 here. I don't want to catch a falling knife. But because, well, I have an order in, and I'm going to remove it because I just don't think it's... Well, you know, I can give it 25 pennies. If it breaks 25, if it breaks 4, that we're long. Oh. If it breaks 400, I'm out. Simple as that. Yeah. So we're going to have to watch here what we do on Meta. We've got a partial fill there, uh, long at the quarter dollar. If this, yeah, I'm going to give it 25 pennies. If it breaks 400, I'm out here, but well, we'll have to wait and see uh, what we get. Let me just uh, send it to you so I can put in my stops, okay? Yeah, please do. Yeah, I mean, I'm still looking at IWM um, with a weird intense longing. Um, I don't know why. I basically, I, I do like this level. And I like that we had, like, I think this one has been kind of respecting levels. I'll put it that way. We kind of get in, uh, we, we went back down once we got into that area from where we consolidated earlier. Uh, so I think that's certainly of note. I like stocks that respect levels as someone who's a bit rangier and definitely a bit scalpier, more than a bit scalpy. Um, so I think I like that we have, we're kind of coming into this range from whence we shot up earlier. If we fail this, I will go short. If we bounce off of it, I will go long. And that's why I'm keeping my eye on it because I do not want to miss an opportunity. Um, to, to pair, well, I mean, to quote Eminem, this opportunity comes once in a lifetime, yo. Um, and I mean, it doesn't, the thing with day trading is you have so many cool opportunities and that's what's, you know, like Sean and Neil are always bringing um, great stuff and Sharif and I sometimes trade a little bit of a different thing. Although yesterday, I know we had some patented Katina trades. Today, I know Sean um, and Sharif were both in that Apple. But the point I'm trying to make is, I think, you know, I use that Eminem quote, but I do think what's great about day trading is you will have X number of opportunities in a day um, and basically, I feel like I'm just trying to, to make the most of the ones that I am seeing that appeal to me. And this IWM one, uh, 197.50 bounce is one of those opportunities. I want a confirmation candle to the upside. I would like a little green friend moving me up. But I do have to say, we talked about candle patterns last week. Look at this. We have that big swoop down, that wick Ooh. down to 197.50, and the buyers came right back up. I want to wait, though, because I know this candle can mean different things in different contexts. So I will not be hasty. Um, I'll give you a try, but if you really bug me, then I'll say goodbye. Shout out <laughs> to the Spice, Spice Girls. Girls. It is I knew Spice it. Girls. I knew it. I'm like, I've heard that before. Yeah, I had yes, to. Yes, Adara, good um, job. So I think I am going to get long here on <laughs> I to the W to the M. I just got filled. I'm getting out if we break below that 197.50, uh, and I'm taking profit around view up, and that's the plan. And I'm trying to, like, you know, being more decisive. That was very decisive. Uh, we'll see if I regret it, but I do like how we held that area. There right. we go. I got a beak wetter, uh, and I, I have two profit takers here on Meta. I, I fat fingered long accidentally at 440, but for a very small size. The majority of the size is at four and a quarter. I'm looking for a move back into 401. We got a beak wetter at the 75 penny level, and then right at 90s as well. We'll see if Meta can hold 400 right now. Uh, the futures is still heading down, guys. We are not stopping here. We didn't stop at 17.6. It, it's continuing to head down. So Meta could be on the way down. Amazon is on the way down. Softies on the way down. Nvidia is on the way down. So I don't know how long of a support level we get here on Meta. Maybe I should just scalp this and get the hell out of Dodge because... Well, why would Meta hold up randomly? Okay, it's sure, it's psychological resistance. Sure, it's a $400 level, but the market doesn't seem to have a bottom at this moment, uh, at least not one that I'm seeing. So I think I'm gonna stick with the plan if it, for now. If it breaks 400, we're gonna lose 25 pennies on it. We already kind of wet our beak on some profits there. AMD is absolutely headed to the downside. Here comes 173 on AMD. The chips are absolutely tanking right now. What is Meta doing? Meta's still at 4, 
400 and a half, so nothing doing there. It's not stopping me out through the break of four. Keeping my eye on the chips, AMD's giving up a lot right now, guys. Wow, we just broke through 173. 173 and three quarters coming in on AMD. Let's see what Apple's doing. Apple right back down into 188. We're gonna wet our beak here on some profits as it's doing that dance in front of 188 again. Uh, the low on the day right now, 187.87 on AAPL, holding 188 for now. We'll have to wait and see what we get there. And then KURA right back into 220, sorry, into 22, putting in uh, kind of, I don't wanna say higher lows because it's a consolidation bottom here at 21 and two thirds, but uh, anticipating a break of 22. And that's why I've got all these beak wetters lined up on K-U-R-A, but we're gonna have to keep an eye here on Meta because that's where the real, the real trouble could lie. Yeah, I mean, this is like, what a market. I, you know, people are saying like, this market is crazy. I believe this market is crazy. IWM, we did get out. Uh, this was a small trade in the small cap ETF. Um, basically, I accidentally fat fingered into this. I need to address this. I, because I've been shorting a lot lately, I have this thing where I will just instinctively, and it's not even like I, I you know, press the key to go, uh, because I, I think to exit a short, you have to press your buy key, right? So I was like, oh, I'm getting out of this short. It was not a short, it was a long. Accidentally added to the position, got out, uh, didn't lose too much of the fat finger, but still kind of an embarrassing moment. I do want to wait, I should have waited for more of a confirmation candle before getting in. I like where we we're holding that book. We oh, did man. hold there for a while and then kind of flew back down. So I'm just going to be really cautious of what we do here. That's this was a strong man. area, but I might. I may have been a little bit too hasty. Also, thank you so much to Kyle Burdett for the 199 Super Chat. My favorite spice girl is short spice. Dump it. Yeah, dump <laughs> it indeed. Um, yeah, it turns out that I, you know, I... Maybe, maybe don't use Spice Girls, Girls lyrics as your uh, impetus for taking a trade. I'll put What's it that way. What's a favorite Spice Girls song? Oh, I like that Christmas one they did. I have to say that one was pretty good. I, mean, I forget what it's called, I but I um, really need to sing it. They did, but I don't remember how it. Oh my god, I, can't I didn't know they actually did any Christmas specials. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, you got guts for doing that. Good for you. Um, look, I, I didn't even know they did a Christmas they song. They did. That's, That's like a the good first song. Time I'm hearing about this, uh, but yeah, very interesting. All right, uh, Meta moving up now, possibly into that 401 area, guys. So we got the beak wetters lined up on this bad boy, but it's a little spready, six, seven pennies at times. So sometimes you're gonna have to cross. Uh, above that area in order to get the fill. So make sure if you're in this trade, you're cognizant of the spread here if you've got your orders lined up like I do. So here we go, there we go. We get the fill there through the break of 480, uh, sorry, 480. And now we're sitting just a smidge below 401. Let's keep our eye on that. The other trade that we need to concern ourselves with is KURA, but we're still doing that dance with 22 bucks. Uh, Apple, we have very small size left on AAPL as we're holding 188 again. So we got that low wick right now. So far, I think in the 188, what was that? Uh, 11, 188.11 there. Uh, we're at 17s right now. The market it's still headed down. It's still headed down. So I am concerned about this meta trade because of the market, right? quite frankly. So that's why I keep coming back into META here. Well, we got some uh, nice moves on it so far, but this could be a dead cap bounce, uh, right? You just get that perfunctory bounce off that psychological support at 400, and then Huadun goes the dynamite, and we continue to trend down, especially if the NQ starts coming back into possibly 17.5. I mean, we saw 17.5-ish, didn't we, yesterday? Didn't we see 17.5 yesterday? I think we did. I think we did. Let's go and have a look quickly over here. I'm pretty sure we saw some... 500 levels yesterday, let's look. Yeah, of course, look at yesterday. The low oh, yesterday, yeah, yeah we, we got plenty of 500 touches. The low yesterday was 17.520, so I mean, yeah, we're, we're still in, uh, yeah, we've, we've been at this level before. Okay, KURA at 22 bucks, I have nothing to report there. I'm just gonna keep my eye here on Meta, guys. I am concerned about this trend. I like this look. On Meta? Yeah. Yeah, I just hate trying to think that I'm smart enough to know where the bottoms are. Because I'm not, right? And that's what, you know, I hate taking these counter trend trades. It's not like me to do that. I like to go with the trend, but that 400 level was too too delicious. <laughs> yeah, tasty, yeah. yeah. Right, 400, whole dollar, $100 level, go, go, go. And it held 400, to be fair. Like, it did hold it pretty well. But I see what you mean. Yeah, for now, for yeah. now. Here we go, back up again. Could we get uh, the, we're sitting here, guys, at 88s. 
Uh, shout out to all my Asians, because that's, uh, that's a lucky number for my Asians over there. I remember someone told me exactly what it meant last time, too. Somebody in the chat let me know what the, why 88 was a, was a good number. Anyway, I'm sitting there at 88s. We'll see if we get the fill. We're dancing with three quarters of a dollar right now. Uh, yeah, we're not at lows on the NQ at the moment, but we're still very much close to those. There we go on meta. We get the fill through the break. Adara's pumped. I'm pumped. The Katina Man is in meta as well, 400-ish. The, the Katina Man is long at 431 on META, so he's looking for that move back up as well. Uh, there goes Meta through 401. Okay, we're going to wet our beak here as, as well. Nice move up on Meta right now as the future gets a bit of a bounce of there. Yeah, I'm getting long meta if we get back to that 40101. I wanted a nice 401 break. I said that was, you know, because Yurif was asking, would you get long meta 400? And I said, I'm going to long meta 401, and I meant that. And um, I, do, I do like that we're holding this area for right now. We shall see. Um, I'm going to, I don't want to lose everything that happened in, the, in those meta trades earlier, though. You know what I mean? I don't want to lose the right. whole shirt. I'll lose a sleeve. <laughs> I'll lose, like, you know, I'll make it a crop top, but I don't want to lose my whole shirt here. So I'm going to be very cognizant of what's going down in this trade. Actually, you know what? I'm going to wait for another 401 test, I've decided, because I don't, I want to be a bit more conscious after um, IWM gate. I'm joking, it was not a gate. It just was, it happened. Although, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten my fill I'm anyway, because Meta said, you want 401? Cool, I'm going to go to 402. If there are nice dips along the way, I shall dip my toe into Meta. I shall tap the like button. I shall double tap, you know, give it a heart. I might get involved in this long. <laughs> but clearly, Meta doesn't want me here right now, and that's okay. Does that um, hurt your feelings? No. Okay, that's good. You know, I, I'm not letting, I'm trying not to let it show. I like that. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting better at getting the sarcasm. I'm yeah, you are. I mean, initially, when I would say sarcastic stuff to Adair, she would just look at me like, like, what are you talking about? Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? And then uh, we got to know each other, and now she gets my jokes. Guys, we are moving up nice on Meta. Pumped about this 400 bounce. We wet our beak there through the 401 and two-thirds. Nicely in the money on META as it does find support at 400 so my concern i guess alleviated for now but for how long it could still be a dead cap bounce i don't want to you know start pontificating like this is going to move back up into 406 and a third so we're going to wet our beak uh on the ascent up good trade here right now on meta still holding some decent size on this bad boy we'll see how far this one goes but needless to say if it comes back into my level at 400 and a third that's going to be the end of the trade because i got to tell you the future, looking at the future right now, not encouraging. Not encouraging at all. The future is not even retracing into 17.6. Into it's not even bothering to reject off 17.6. The, the best it can do is like 17.587. So we'll have to wait and see what the future brings. But I, I don't want to be, I don't want to say I don't want to be, but I, I'm not as optimistic on a meta long if the future continues to trend to the downside. All right, so I'm not taking anything else out on Apple unless it breaks 188. So we're gonna hold the remaining position on AAPL um, for the break of 188. We've already de-risked the majority of the size on this, so nothing really to do here. But one thing that I have to comment about, AMD is on the way down. We, we can't find any support anywhere. Look at this move down on Bad. AMD, my goodness. We are at day's lows right now on AMD. 172, we're making day's lows as we speak on AMD. This is giving up the ghost big. A $6 move, Adara, and counting off the highs. 178.48 is the HOD right now on AMD, and it is headed down. Well, we could, we, every time I look, there's a new low of day. So we'll have to wait and see where we get support on AMD. Could be that $10 level. Maybe we make it down into 170 again and take a similar trade like we took on Meta at 400. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Pack our patience with that one, Adair. Yeah, I mean, packing patience. I'm just staring at NVIDIA like a deer in the headlights. Like a, like a deer in the headlights? I don't know. But um, I got involved here because I liked how we held that 628 area. I, what, when I got involved, this candle was green. Um, how quickly things change. But I like that we ha I like the, the the concept of this bounce here off that six twenty eight ish area earlier. I get involved, we swoop back below, but we're holding six twenty seven fifty like a glove, like a perfect like a velvety glove. Although as I say that, we just dip below. So Nvidia trying to make me out to be a liar here. No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> I'm gonna have to get out of this because this is just not. We're gonna be out Nvidia right here right now. 
Um, this is not a look I like. So there we go. Our um, RIP this NVIDIA trade. I think if we fall below here decisively, if we have a 627 break, which it looks like we're trying to get to the downside, then that could actually be um, a short here. I'll have to see. Also, Meta coming into my area of interest, though. Hello. Uh, that 401 retest. I would like to see a better, because this, this whole... Um, Candle wicking to the upside makes me a little bit nervous. It could just be like, hey, the sellers um, are loose. But I want to make sure we see a decisive hold of that 401. Then I may get back involved in this trade because, like I said, I like that 401 area earlier. Look at that beautiful bounce off the open. We did just kind of swoop below 401 now, but we reclaimed it. I like this. I like this. I want to see it a couple more times, so I'm confident. But I do like the look of this. Someone was asking AMD uh, where to buy, and you know we don't give advice here, but I would say AMD maybe just maybe just say no. You know, like the old PSAs. I yeah. think AMD. I would probably because the, when there's no like like this way, I always say personally, I get nervous getting involved at things your high of day or low of day because you don't know where the bottom or the top is. And I think AMD would is just a little bit of a scary creature today. Um, like there's such a thing as a VWAP projection. AMD. Uh, AM died off of VWAP. <laughs> and I think to me that that's very different. Um, so I would just be cognizant of that. Not advice, but I would say, you know, maybe maybe look at your list and check it twice before getting involved in a name, especially heading into earnings. Because yeah. Lisa Sue will wear a different, I am sure, color jacket today on that uh, as she, she does, reports I'm earnings. Not watching. I'm going to have to check to see what she's wearing before I, we put on the stream. I, 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 as someone who has an affinity for blazers, I have an affinity for her blazers. And I have know you, you like certain blazers. Pardon? Have you seen her blue one? Yeah, I know you showed me. It was me. like it was Pepsi great. blue, like the, the real nice kind of blue. And if anybody's seen my car, you know I like blue, right? Like, hush, that's my thing, right? I love blue. Uh, so, yeah, I was dazzled by her, her jacket. Guys, uh, what's its name? Meta, coming back down now into 401. So I put my stop in now a smidge below my entry. So I'm long 431. I've put it through the break of the quarter dollar. So this is gonna have to hold that 400 quarter dollar area for me to stay involved. I don't wanna give it to 400. Again, I don't wanna get two touches off 400. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, yeah, if it comes into my entry, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna end this bad boy here. Let's see, I, ideally, obviously it holds or it stays above that 401 level. It is doing the dance with 401 right now. So we'll have to wait and see what we get with that one. Uh, AMD getting a bit of a bounce now off that 172.60 low. Now it's back above 173 into the 173 in a third area. AAPL right back down above 188, 188.11. We're not taking any more out of Apple unless and until it breaks that 188 level. We've already de-risked. And this trade is starting to annoy me. KURA, I know these ones kind of do their thing. Uh, they accumulate, accumulate until the more liquid time of day, then they skyrocket up. Or, you know, doesn't happen every time, obviously, but this is kind of like the modus operandi of these small cap gappers that straddle VWAP. But I just, you know, I've been out of the money for, for a while. I'm 10 pennies out of the money at the moment right now. Uh, we're long 2209. It's at 2198. So, yeah, if you could just get going here to the high side, that'd just be aces. <laughs> so, uh, packing my patience with KURA. Go ahead. I just like the rounded top. That's all I was right? going to say. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not taking any more unless it breaks 188, right? I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, we've taken out the majority of the position now on Apple so we can get picky about where we get out. But the, the trade that I'm most concerned about, uh, without, without question, is Meta. It's going to have to hold 400 in the third. Yeah, Meta, I mean, I keep looking at it longingly, but I'm like, I, I want to wait. I do, after the IWM gate and uh, my NVIDIA moment, I'm just trying to be a little bit more patient, right? Because I had some nice trades earlier today, and it, they came from having patience and, and having ideas. So I, you know, we're, we're going to try to, like I said, I don't want to lose my whole shirt. I'll take a sleeve as long as, you know, I plan to lose that sleeve. But I think I just want to be cognizant of what is happening here. So um, I feel very badly because I have not talked about Tesla oh. in a while yet. Okay. And Jameson saying, Tesla, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. I'll wave to Tesla. Tesla's crossing into red territory here, heading into Redsville, holding on by the skin of its teeth to this 191. And... Um, you know, to, to extend that further, 191 and positive territory. Because I think if we dip below 191, I would wager to say that we will be negative on the day. We are we are holding down, uh, holding on to this, chomping at the bit here. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying, but the point I'm trying to make what? is it, it, Tesla is struggling. I would get involved in this short if we have this failure of this 191.70 area. Why? Because look at how much we consolidated from there. Then we fell with the swiftness. I would take profit at 191. But I don't want to get involved in this when I'm not really sure and Tesla's not really sure what he's doing. 
So I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to um, put too much pressure left. That didn't, work, that worked better in my head on Tesla. Uh, but this one, certainly Tesla, if you are a short. I was looking at this at 193 and I should have gotten involved and I didn't. I have a question. Please do. Now, you know, you, you enjoy your puns and I, I, I find them funny as well. Do you incorporate puns in your writing? So the, okay, so you told me that you're writing a teen drama. Yeah. Right? Did you incorporate any puns in there? There were, okay, there were a couple, I think, but I think um, now I kind of maybe want to pepper in some more. Oh, Because okay. I'm like, you know, now I feel like, I, I like I like puns, I like wordplay, I like that type of thing, and I think you're right, like with teen dramas, and I think that's the kind of one of the genres right. you can yeah. do that yeah. a little bit. So, yeah, maybe maybe we'll sprinkle some some stuff in more salt bay like, okay, a little okay, bit more. I appreciate okay, that. Okay, I like Thank that. you, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, too, I feel like puns are sometimes, they, they're more fun to say out loud, too, because then you get an immediate that's reaction. Funny. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I see what you mean. I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I just wanted to know, like, uh, what you incorporate. Because clearly, you know, writing techniques are a thing. And if you're good at something, like making puns, might as well use it, right? Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. So, yeah. Keeping, uh, just wanted to check um, check with that. But Adara, we are right now, um, we're based, I don't want to say we're basing out on the future. Because, you know, you never really know what's going to come next. But for the moment, at least, uh, here, we're getting a bit of a sideways consolidation. Uh, some candles making higher lows here on the NQ by no means a bounce. Just trying to um, figure out whether we continue to head to the downside here. What kind of volume we're getting in on these candles. Looks like the volume is dropping off. The real volume came in though on that big boy Hwaduk when we dropped from about six, sorry, 17.650 all the way down to 17.563, which is a, almost a 100 point move there on the future, unabated to the downside. So we're still involved. In KURA, um, 10 pennies out of the money. Uh, we're still involved on AAPL. We're not wetting our beak with any more, with any more outs until the break of 188. And uh, Meta, while well, Meta's going to have to hold up here, it's coming right back down, breaking 40, 400 and a half to triggers that 400 and quarter. That will be the end of the trade for me. Um, and we'll have to possibly look for something else. Maybe if it gives up the ghost, at 400, then this would be an interesting short. So I'm gonna have to get out of my long, obviously, at 400 and a quarter, but if it gives up the ghost, and I mean like on a decisive basis, not a quick wick down below 400 and a bounce right back up, I mean legitimately closing on a five minute candle below 400, maybe we'll start looking at META short. But right now we're, uh, we're involved in long and we're gonna, we're gonna try to nurse this bad boy until it's no longer valid. So nothing, for more, uh, nothing more for me to add, sadly, at this point on any, uh, any of my trades, all three. What are you guys looking at in the chat? Um, how do you guys feel about this market? Start throwing in some uh, comments or uh, some tickers that Adara and I can look at here. Shout out to Jeff Ross. Um, I, was, I was letting him know exactly where we get uh, our um, data for short, sell, uh, for short float, and that is by using trade ideas. Make sure to use the code Trader TV 20 for 20% off. Shout out to the NOS boss and his crew. He was on the, uh, the, uh, the market recap show with the Katina man. And I did happen to watch that actually because Miss Katina was nice enough to take that and repost it to social media. So shout out to Marissa Katina for putting that. And that was a great uh, interaction between also you. On LinkedIn. Also on LinkedIn. The Katina man now active on all social media platforms, baby. LinkedIn. Uh, if you don't follow the Katina man on there, maybe you should get working. All right, Adara, we are up above 22 bucks here on KURA. KURA. So now I'm hoping for the beak wetters here at that 22 and a fifth. And then we're also sitting at 22 and a third. And you guessed it, we're sitting also at 22 and a half. We're breaking up above this range, but we need to do it on a closing basis. And, and sadly, I don't see the volume accompanying this move up on KURA. So I am a little bit suspicious of this pop above 22, but what I do like, and what I think you guys can see quite clearly, is the succession of higher lows. Now that I do that, you can't see it. The succession of higher lows. Low, higher low, higher low, higher low, and another higher low over here, but we need that move, or otherwise the higher lows mean squat. So we'll have to wait and see what we get there. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully Kira um, can fi find the cure for that um, stagnance there, and then we can make a nice move to the upside because that one's stagnant for quite some time. Mm. Um, Tesla, I mean, this Tesla short. I basically, I, I, I saw that we were holding decently uh, at that 191.40. I could have reloaded at 191.90. Not, what, what the, 
Derek, calm down. 19150. Maybe I should have. Uh, I did not reload, though. It's a little small position. Like I said, I'm going to be watching what we do with this 191. Um, and you know what? I don't want to get out everything here just because the position is so small. But I, I could be worried about a curl up. So maybe we will be our scalpy selves. And <laughs> we're going to try to get out right before this 191 here. Um, yeah, you know, like, you know, we're talking like about it. like being like true it. to our trading styles. Thank you. And I think. My trading style, I am inherently scalpier. And I think when I don't respect that is when I get nervous in trades ah. like that. The city group and then um, leave uh, perhaps a little bit early. I left the party um, at an inopportune time. So I'm just trying to be you know, conscious of that um, because sometimes, you know, I feel like if I plan it, if I go into it saying I know I'm going to scalp, I think it ends up going better. So we're going to try to scalp out of this cyber truck right here and right now. Um, also, yeah, so I think, yeah, also, um, was that pun intentional with LinkedIn? Um, when you were like, oh, check shot out LinkedIn, get that working? Was no, that intentional? No, I didn't, I didn't, no, I, I like actually it. mean it. I think I've been uh, just around you too much now. They're just like, I'm doing them subconsciously, Adara. No, I actually didn't mean that. I thought that was cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. But yeah, check out the podcast too, of course, because I've been watching that. I do I have my makeup podcast, and so I've been working through this most recent podcast. Uh, they talk also about uh, Netflix and different streaming platforms as well, and what has the better shows. And I have to say, I do agree with the hot takes on Netflix um, and how Netflix could have some better content. So yes, ma'am. I think um, definitely check that out so you know what we are talking about um go podcast that yes, was my, my go plug podcast, podcast. Uh, in fact um now what i'm watching is this uh, i'm watching meta okay like just be real about it here i am concerned <laughs> there he is the podcast man himself baby the katina man now, i'm watching meta here it quite intently um because well i'm i've got my stop right at that 400 and a quarter and we came awfully close there 440 we're we're finding some support say that again katina man the katina man is already he's he's taking out his meta as we talk here um and I, i'm not surprised like i mean you don't want to come back into 400 and test that again uh with the lower high so we'll, we'll see here the best fill for the Katina Man, 401.60, baby. And that was the pop-up through the 50 period. So shout out to him there. We'll see what we get here on Meta. Does it hold 400? Question mark? He's also short AMD as well. So you have to manage that trade, right? You can't, yeah, these are big boy trades here that he's got to keep his eye on. So I completely understand with him. All right, guys, we did get a fill on AAPL. When it broke that uh, 188 level, it's at 188 again. So there's a little green triangle through the break of 188. Apple, low of day, 187.87. We're right back at the 188 as the future is headed right back down. Let's have a look at KURA, right back into 22 again. Wow, it's so annoying. Um, I'm just going to have to be patient with this one uh, and focus on my other trades. I already have the stop on KURA. Uh, Apple doing the dance with no pants with 188 right now. We'll have to see how that does. And yeah, Meta at 400 and a half again. Nothing changed there. Can I ask maybe a strange question? Go. Um, so how do you stay patient in trades? Like how do you, and I know you have your whole like, um, the whole idea of being, like a trade still being valid, which I, which I appreciate. But I guess also like when, and especially if a trade is like kind of waffling a little bit, how do you tell yourself, hey, the patience know. has been packed and you've got to stay in? Because you're good at that. And I struggle with screen that. Screen time, screen time, screen time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And just, and be dead inside. Like shout out to Alfred. <laughs> oh no. I really don't have an answer for that. I appreciate really the honesty. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you the time. truth. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Whatever it is, I really don't have an answer for that, Adara. Yeah, Scarjo Rabbit saying dead with no feelings, which I think yeah, same kind of idea as what you were saying. I do, I do appreciate that, and the um, and yeah, I mean, if anybody has any result, I, yeah. I guess examples of yeah. them being patient in trades. Well, well I would you, love to I hear. I think it. Neil and Sean probably better to ask about that than me, to be honest with you, because they've been trading for way longer. Um, I, I think maybe we can get their opinion later on uh, the mar on oh. the uh, the what's it called show the closing. Um, yeah, the, uh, also yeah. Neil saying set up um, if then statements for your trade execution. Absolutely. Thank Couldn't you so much. More. I really appreciate that. Saad also saying a strong plan will allow patience. When you know your outs both for profit and loss, Bang. it just becomes a waiting game. Thank I you so much, it. guys. Darwin, have a plan. Follow the plan. Um, this is uh, this is awesome. I really appreciate everybody's yeah. advice because, you know, trading is going to look different for every person. But if you can kind of get a sense of what different people, what works for different people, it can um, help there. <laughs> Getting <Okay>. some fun <laughs> advice from uh, Ramin, I believe. Yeah, here. you got to punch out with like your face there because you got to tie out your hands if JK, it goes against you. Don't trade. 
I don't trade. She's a, she oh, trade. I, I yeah. said I don't trade. I apologize. That was it. <laughs> but no, I like tiger. I mean, tiger hands can sometimes be, you know, people saying yeah. hands behind the back. So I guess yeah, yeah, that's yeah. something. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't really want to tie them behind my back. But uh, yeah, I get, I get the idea there. You know, a lot of people do some other stuff. You know, you put in a stop with a decent, um, with a decent spread so you can get triggered. And then you go for a walk. If it triggers your, your profit taker, it triggers it. If it triggers your out, it, it triggers it. Otherwise, you're still in the trade. I like right? that. Yeah. So you can do any number of things. I mean, I've done a bunch of stuff. Like when I was trading at home, I put in my stops, I put in my profit takers, and I go to the gym. And I come back for a nice surprise. I'd either eat up or down. I like right? that. So yeah. then you're not stressing yeah, about it. Exactly. Right? And then I'd have to fight the obviously the desire to want to look at it mid workout on my phone. And yeah, so there's any number of things you could do, really. I'm just. But I think Neil's is the best one. Have a plan, stick to it. If it triggers, it triggers. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then you're somewhere in between. Apple is on the way down. Adara, here comes low of day again. We're going to wet our beak here as well. Uh, how many shares do we, so we still have? Uh, yeah, we still have uh, some nice outs here on AAPL. Down we go again on Apple. We're almost a buck in the money. We're coming into support level two on the pivots where we just touched low of day, 187.87, the future at lows and everything in between. And let's go back into meta here because it looks like we are about to get triggered out of meta anytime as we come back into that 400 and a quarter. And there we go. We are now out of the meta trade. It's all over. We did well on this one, but it did come back into 400. And that is the end of my trade on META. I'm pleased this punch uh, uh, to take an Adara-ism uh, <laughs> from this trade. I, it is very much counter to my trading style. I don't typically take these counter trend trades, but it was a juicy one off the 100 point, uh, $100 level, excuse me. And uh, therefore I, I kind of broke my rule for a bit, but it was short lived. We're out of the trade now, printed on it, please this punch. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, felicitacion to you. We always, like, I'm, you know, please this punch always. If, if, if ever anyone else is pleased this punch, I am pleased this punch with them. I'm not just pleased to punch it myself right now, getting involved in this AMD long. We saw a pattern, I'm gonna to try to call this the umbrella handle. You know how those umbrellas have like those curved handles at the bottom? So that's kind of what I was seeing with AMD. I guess also like a rounded bottom is like the normal name for it. But basically I liked that we had this pseudo bounce off 173. If we break below 173, which we're trying to do right now, I will be outie and I want that decisive break below. However, this is a really small position. Again, just trying to practice getting into the hang of taking really small size if I like a setup and then adding to that setup should it continue to, to pay off, right? Because I don't want to get involved, um, you know, full speed ahead until I see proof that it'll work, especially something that's a little dicier, like this AMD trade. But I did like we had that round bottom, that little curve up here. Um, oh, and we just fell below 173 with, with a viciousness. I want to wait and see what we do with these wicks here. Like I said, okay, yeah, we, we're going to have to, oh, we're recovering. Okay, I apologize. I'm just narrating this trade at this point. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep an eye on this. I didn't set a hard stop on this, which I probably should have, just because I, I think with this, I really wanna be like kind of monitoring it because AMD is very volatile and um, this may have been um, a mistake. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get out of this, I think. We're gonna get out of this here. Um, yeah, so apologies for that um, fun emotional roller coaster we were on with AMD there. I like the setup, the setup didn't work and we're trying to get out as we speak. What is happening with this out? There we go. But yeah, so um, also, uh, Kyle, thank you for the super chat there. Um, 199 super chat, I'm not gonna read that out, but thank you uh, very much for the support. Also, AMD, what are you doing? I cannot get filled on this out here. Um, congrats. Yeah, I was, I went long AMD on that rounded bottom for some reason. So, um, but we're out now. 173.30, almost a dollar club. Another member, the dollar club, not very exclusive. Lots of fun friends there. Now it's a dollar. Now oh. It's a dollar. Oh, yeah, congrats to that. Um, yeah, congrats. Sean, definitely the right idea with that trade. I, I got long. I think I got long where he got short. So that was certainly um, a questionable moment there, but I uh, should have had a better stop set. Yeah, tell Rania, you're right. Didn't you 20 minutes ago give advice for AMD uh, of not getting involved? Yeah, I did initially say not get involved with AMD. I did go against my own advice there. But then I did, I and mean, you know what? I should have waited. I should have waited for that 173.60. I appreciate you for holding me accountable to that. That was definitely a bit of a mistake. But I did like that rounded bottom and initial, uh, uh, eventually ended up getting back in here. Yeah, big oof is right. This certainly was. Yeah, I like that, John. A big oof yeah. for me in this trade. I can. Oh. 
Yeah, it's 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 oh, for this. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I, I can you know, I, and you know, Till Ran is correct. I did say don't get involved in this, and then I did get involved because I thought I saw a rounded bottom, and that was Fair. a bit of an oops moment. Fair. Um, but like I said, really small position size. Actually, not didn't lose that much on it. I have to say, you know, I said I didn't want to lose a shirt. Um, I should have had a stronger stop set for sure. I'm still working on on that, but you know what? Is what it is here. Also, yeah, I don't know if you saw the super chat from Kyle Burdett. I did Big not. Big Kyle Burdett, my man. What did he say? Um, I didn't read it out. Um, oh, is but, it readable? Because Big Kyle Burdett sometimes. But you I know, did want. I thought, you know, I know you. Yeah. you he's he's the man there. So I just wanted to thank him for that super chat. <laughs> um, yeah. I like I like that Kyle. Always joking and uh, and as joyful and gleeful as always. He's pumped right now because you can tell he's pumped. He's like the NVIDIA Perma dump bear, here. Yeah. yeah, the Perma Bear is printing right now. NVIDIA is on uh, the move down, guys. Uh, big move down on NVIDIA. Let's bring in the side chart over here and talk a little bit about this. We have now $10 worth of range on this double top. Nice looking double top there with the neckline break there at that six. 629 and a half. NVIDIA is on the move down. It is over now at uh, $10 from its high. Guys, the high essentially was 635. It was 634.93. Now the low of day is 623.28. This is on the way down. Look at that one five minute candle. That is ugly. Uh, do we have anything on this? Um, I don't see anything on NVIDIA. AI growth, lower interest rates, no, that's all stuff that is macro. Let's see anything here on AMD. I don't see anything on AMD as well. Maybe we'll ask Brendo. Brendo's now back at the big desk, see if he sees anything on these bad boys. But uh, wow, that's all I can say about that. Now, Meta did come into that $400 area. It did hold 400. The low of day right now on Meta is $400.05, getting a bit of a double bounce, double bottom, pardon me, off 400. I mean, you could reload into it, but I don't know. This could be a good double bottom, who knows? Uh, for me to participate in this, it's gotta break above 401 and two thirds because that's where we ascend it to over here. So if we don't break that high on that bounce off the initial 400 touch, then I guess I'm just not gonna be involved in this. But AMD, oh my God. Yeah, this was not my best wow, moment. Wow, AMD and Meta, I mean AMD and NVIDIA. Don't feel bad about that. Not... I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have a look here. Apple getting support again back above 188. We'll have to see if we get anything here, but it's been a red day on these markets, baby. Uh, the NQ, a lot more red than the ES, 0.8 in the red for the NQ, only 0.23 for the ES. So the overall market uh, faring better than tech. Yeah, do you see AMD? The Katina man is printing on his, uh, sorry, on his AMD short as that continues to head to the south side. South side. Hit it. Jeez, $2 in the money. What's the Apple, 188. Yeah. Meta, I know, I, we just talked about that when you weren't there, yeah. We talked about that 400 level on Ooh. Meta. It's holding up again, guys. We talked about that 400 and five cent low. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just not gonna jump into this one at the moment. This is, I might have big, to take, move down. yeah, I might have to take um, Ramin's advice in the chat and tie my hands here. <laughs> no, I'm joking, like, you know, I'm still, I'm still up on the day in the sim here. Like, I, I, you know, I had that meta trade earlier that went well, we had that Citigroup, um, one of the NVIDIA trades, but basically I think my issue was I'm just trying to get involved where there isn't a clear point of entry. I did like my AMD entry at the time. Um, I liked, I was calling it the umbrella handle pattern where we have a bit of a scoop to the upside, but maybe maybe that's maybe a short move. I don't know, I just should, should have been a little bit more cautious, but I do like this quote from Mr. Mems in the chat saying, um, I'm gonna read this out properly here. Uh, one of the skills of resilience is the ability to forget the past. Oh, I, I couldn't agree And I, I really appreciate yeah. that. And so you know what, yes. this AMD trade passed. It's gonna be AM dead to me at this moment. And I'm just gonna look for, for future opportunities. Uh, but now it is, it's past one. So I can get uh, yeah, started with the lesson. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Ram Ram, can we restart the topics, please? Thank you. She's already on it. Ram Ram killing it on the ones and twos. Yeah. Um, and do, you ha do you want me to send you that uh, example? Oh, picture? I found the picture actually. Jeez, look yes. at you. You don't need me. I can just go home. <laughs> no, I just saw it. And, well, cause I know you, you were like looked it up. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. 
But yeah, no, I much appreciate it. I like this one too, because it shows the stages of the gaps, which we've discussed yes. and Sharif and I were talking about it this morning off camera and we talked about it also today. But I think um, a really nice point here is that these come in waves. And so common gaps can come wherever, but really what the trajectory of these gaps Metal. shall be uh, the breakaway gap when we make a move deci in a si decisive direction. Then we've got that con uh, continuation gap. And the continuation gap basically will signal you've got this pause in a consolidation, and then you have a move up to start a new trend. And it's basically a little brief pausing period before that trend resumes and continues here. Uh, so what are some of the, the characteristics of continuation gaps? I had a lot of questions about uh, these earlier, and I think I learned a lot. If anyone has any other questions too, definitely put them in the chat, because I think usually if one person has a question, sometimes other people will as well. Fair. Um, so volume analysis, one thing you need to do uh, to look for characteristics of this trade. So continuation gaps are usually, and this is a new thing I learned, accompanied with lower trading volume compared to breakaway gaps. So we saw that example of some of those massive gaps up, and I think we used Eli Lilly as an example yesterday. 10 million uh, volume for Eli Lilly, that is staggering when it had its big $50 initiation gap, right? So I think to me, that's a clear sign of initiation gap. A consolidation gap is going to be a little bit less significant there. And that because it, it's about the temporary slowdown in market activity during the consolidation phase. <laughs> then we also have consolidation um, patterns, which are something to keep in mind in too. So if after our breakaway gap and if we fall into a consolidation, keep an eye out for consolidation patterns as well. So, cause you can find the consolidation gaps within these patterns. So a flag, a pennant, a triangle, all these patterns we talked about. With that in mind, another thing that Sharif was mentioning earlier that I found helpful is with those, you want to see repeated touches of areas. That's really important, right? You yeah. want to see like the more you, times you touch an area, the more intense it will be when we decisively break out of it. Speaking of that, Meta's looking nice. Yeah, but, um, I'm looking at it, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just, I just saw that in the side chart. I was like, oh. But yeah, basically, um, to continue there, um, price action confirmation is another thing you want to look at. That's another characteristic that might help you identify a continuation gap. So traders are going to look for confirmation through subsequent price action after continuation gap, and that'll kind of ensure that the trend actually does resume in that direction. So you, you don't want to just get in because you see a gap. You want to get it in on one element. And I think, you know, we learned that to use, to use an AMD trade and example, right? I got in because I saw one thing and I ignored the rest of what's happening. And I think an example here too, especially because continuation gaps can be a bit rarer. You do need the breakaway gap first. You need a period of consolidation first. You need lower volume. You don't want to get in just because you have one thing. You want to get in on, shout out to Sharif, the balance of the evidence. And so I think that's key and just something I want to echo here as well. Um, but how do you identify these? Now that you know your characteristics, how do you find one in the wild? Because that was a little bit difficult. I was trying to find them in the wild, but they're a little bit trickier than they may appear. Uh, so one thing to look at, chart, pa chart patterns. Continuation gaps, like we said, sometimes associated with specific chart patterns. Bull flag, that's a continuation pattern. Bear flag, pennants, or symmetrical triangles. So you know what we were saying too, and this goes back to our early conversation, it's a lot easier to look for patterns that aren't there than identify patterns that are there. So if you see a pattern, but it's in, um, it's a continuation pattern, and like let's say it's a, a bull flag, but we're down on the day, maybe that pattern's not valid, right? But if you see a bull flag and we're up on the day, it might be a little bit easier to identify continuation gaps. So it's looking at everything together um, in one beautiful package instead of just individual elements. Volume decline, also important here. So you have to look at the decline in trading volume uh, during the gap, which will then kind of indicate that we do have a little bit lower market participation and that you know the continuation gap may be happening. We also want to look at um, price support and resistance levels. As we were saying, if you have certain touches of a level, especially if you're stuck in a trend line, and you're just waddling along that trend line, and then we have a continuation gap up. That could be of note, right? Especially yeah. if it is in the same direction, I think, you know, something to note as well. And that actually, I have a question on that, yeah. if you do not mind. Cool. So I know, I think, I think the answer to this would probably be it's a common gap, but I want to ask anyway. So let's say we have this, and use this example, we have this little move up, then we have the breakaway gap, then we have our consolidation, la di da di da right. then we gap <laughs> down from there. Yes, Does that mean anything? Gap. Yeah. Oh, I see. So that's a failed continuation gap. Yeah. So one of the things we mentioned with the continuation gap is it is in a consolidative range that it breaks out from. So the price action prior to the continuation gap is in a consolidative range. So for it has to continue the trend, whatever the trend was. If we took an initiation gap to the downside, it has to continue down. If we took it to the upside, it has to continue up. And then also it has to maintain that continue that consolidation area. If it fails the consolidation area and comes into the initial breakout area, 
then it was a failed, there was a failed, it was a common gap to begin with. The initiation gap would have been a common gap, right? Okay. So that's one of the things that we have to be on alert for. So you're, you, three gaps we're looking for. Initiation, continuation, exhaustion. And that's that last one right there. Okay. And so that last one is um, what you would be characterizing there. When you have that break of the consolidation range, but then you break down below the consolidation range. And that would typically be an exhaustion gap. Also, shout out to Ramin, because I like how her little faces are on this little... Yeah, yeah, Ramin's killing on the one. very cool. She's been killing it. But yeah, I just, I, anyways, I, I just wanted to ask that. So thank you for answering that question, because I guess it makes sense, too, in the name, continuation. If you go the opposite direction, you're not continuing the pattern, no. right? Yeah. But I think, too, like, sometimes being able to talk out a thing can make it a little bit clearer. So thank you very much for answering that question. Um, then uh, we also have, you know, trading strategies to talk about. One of these, one that I know Sharif really likes, trend following. Yes, um, so, and especially, it's called continuation for a reason, right? If it's continuing, maybe try to find a way to get involved in that trend as it goes and use these gaps as entry points for trend following strategies. If you have a continuation gap following the breakaway gap, you might think like, hey, you know, look, it's a sign that this trend, even though we're within that consolidative range, may continue to go on. It's something worth noting. Uh, also, pattern recognition here, another thing to keep an eye on. Combining the identification of the gap with recognizing these continuation patterns, you know, or like, you know, let's say we have a trend, like a slight upward trend, a slight downward trend, should we have had that initiation gap to the downside, right? So just things that we're looking for to continue to tell us that, hey, this is valid. And we don't want to look for things where there aren't any, mind you, but if there is confirmation, if it does all come together to build a case beyond a reasonable doubt with the hey. balance of the evidence, I feel like a lawyer now banging my gavel. But I think, I think really that, that's all what you need to look for. And I think yeah. I, I want to use that more entering my own trades, to be honest, beyond going uh, specifically with gaps. Not just trying to get in because you see something you think you like, looking at the general uh, case. How does this, yeah. what's the general flavor of this? And judging your, your point of entry and your point of interest on that. So I think I think that that's the take on consult or continuation gaps. If anyone has any in the wild, uh, really excited to talk about. But I think yeah, I think I've already learned a lot. Gap week, and thank you so much for answering my questions. Yeah, and absolutely. I hope other people in the chat noticing some stuff as well. Also, just really quickly, Mark Susie mentioning Disney oh. breakout. I know Kevy was mentioning this to me earlier in the chat either, and I did not get involved. Ooh, ooh, I like, I like. Is. Yeah, Diz. Uh, one, Fabian once said a dismal. Not a dismal today. Shout out to Fabian for that lovely pun. I will never, <laughs> you know, uh, put down a pun. But I think this 9750, I'm going to be watching what we do at 9750. Um, because we did break out uh, in this consolidation area, mind you. But I want to be conscious that we do have enough steam to keep moving with this move out. Thank you so much to Mark Susie for calling this one out. Thank you to Kevy earlier for calling this one out. So much happening. How have your trades been so, going? Not bad. Well, KURA is like going to be the bane of my existence, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm focusing on Meta because it is on its way up again, and I've got uh, a resting order here to go long through this break of the high. It's going to be for a much, much smaller position that I initially got in at 400, but I'm looking for the making of a new high. And look at that dip into 401 and hold. That's awfully bullish. So possible double bottom at 400. Let, let's look for the break of the neckline. The break of the neckline is going to be around here. So the break of 401 and three quarters could be interesting. And this, you know, this three minute pullback over here, we should be getting long here. Uh, I guess we have to cross. Where's my order at? Meta, meta, meta. There we go. We should be long. We are now long meta at 79s. Uh, smaller position here, guys. We're looking for a move up on meta. The out on this trade, I will know I'm wrong if it breaks below this trough over here. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, ideally, obviously, a hold of a 401. But if we get, um, yeah, if we come in and around that area, it's going to be the end of my trade there. We'll have to pack our patience and see what this one brings. Still involved in that AAPL short. It is getting a nice little bounce off that 188 right now, coming back into 188 and a third. If the, again, my stop on this one has already been placed. It's like a couple of shekels above my entry on Apple. So we're going to have to wait and see whether or not that materializes. But I'm worried about this meta trade, I guess, right? Because it was just such a strong move up off 400. I wonder if it's exhausted. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to give this any room. If it breaks down below 401, that's going to be the end of the trade on that one. And we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a little bit of a loss there. Uh, on that second trade on META, but this is what I wanted. I wanted a continuation through uh, the initial high. It broke that high. It didn't break it on a closing basis on the five minute. I took it on the one. What's up? 
Oh no, sorry. I was oh, just going to say I, I like the yeah. um, I like the the army of ducks getting their beaks wet and that, yeah. that early trade. I, yeah. I well, it looks that. it looks great, right? But you know, it looks like we may give some up here if it breaks through 401. So that yeah, look at it coming right back down. So bamboozlement central, and that's just the way uh, trading is, baby. Uh, let's have a look at KURA. Still nothing doing there. Going to have to focus my efforts on META, but looking for a possible move up on META. Maybe I get bamboozled this time around because it doesn't look like it has uh, the legs to go for now. Does that change, though? So we'll see. Jeremy Newman, ONMD going again. Is it really? So let's have a look at ONMD. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see over here. I just don't want to take my eyes off meta because I have to focus on that. But uh, yeah, it's curling. That's a nice look. That 210 high, I guess it's going to be a little bit hard to break through that with the lower volume that we have at the moment. But yeah, right above VWAP, right above that 150 area, uh, basing it at 175. So we'll have to wait and see what ONMD brings. It's up 24% on the day. Not the biggest of the small cap gapper names, the likes of Nexi and RVSN uh, were in play earlier. Well, I, I'd say Nexi's still in play. It hasn't really given up the go, still above VWAP. RVSN though, sub VWAP now by a couple of bucks. DWAP volume dropping off. PXLW also below VWAP, but straddling it from the south side rather than from the north side. So you know how I feel about that for these small cap gappers. Uh, I'm gonna send it to you because I have to put in my out on meta. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, certainly um, on MD does not seem like it wants to shut off right now. So I think that's certainly of interest. But yeah, I think like that definitely so many small cap names in play, like that RVSN was, was crazy. So I think maybe, maybe there's, there's a lot of moves. I feel like, you know, what's nice about these small caps today, especially, is you're going to find the one that's right for you. So maybe, you know, maybe RVSN moves a little too crazy. I think on MD could also be a nice shot. It is above VWAP. I, yeah, I just wanted to quickly touch on that also. Um, there was something I wanted. Oh, yeah, Johnny Siriani saying, hello, guys. Hello. Hola. Have a look at the Dow Jones. Performing much better than the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. Let's take a look at the D to the I to the A on the Amex. Boop. Oh. Ooh. So I got very excited there. I like this. I really like this move. We had a skosh of a double bottom off of that uh, eight, 382.60. Then we made a little nice high, flew higher, made a nice higher high, and a higher low. Continued to go higher. This is just basically a straight up upward channel for the D to the I to the A. Dow um, showing, you know, very industrious moves up here. Uh, we're only 0.25% up on the day, but still a really nice look for that Dow and um, Jones. Did you say here. industrious for the Dow Jones Industrial? I did. Wow. You <laughs> quality. That's quality right there, baby. <sighs> and then she looked at me a little bit. I'm like, why is she looking at my position? I could but tell. But she was, was waiting really for my reaction because she knew she just dropped uh, another. What's, What's that? on there? That's that B. Remember the, the fly? I think it's the fly animation. They have it there. Well, oh, I didn't know that was an animation. That's cool. I think Ram Ram's bored eating her food and like she's hitting buttons and stuff. I like that. We, we like we <laughs> like the buttons. We like the excitement. Also, right? M, yeah. Mr. M saying, Nexi, do you Nexi, do you love me? Shout out to Drake. I mean, oh, wow. I'll take a look at Nexi. I'm not the small cap um, it's moving. It's person. It's moving. again. Oh, this is nice. We're trying to make that 26 top. It's trying to push below that level, raise the roof here. We'll see what it does. Hopefully, Nexi answers yes to that question, Mr. Mems. Um, I hope, because that would be a really nice look here. I also want to look at cost, because Raul was mentioning mm. that Costco making new all-time highs. Yeah, I mean, very similar to the Dow here, upward channel. Uh, all I have to say is congrats to you if you are in this long-term or short-term. What a beautiful look. I remember when I started, I think Costco was hanging around like 500 or something. Yeah. I want to look to clarify. But this has been a wonderful look here for Costco. Um, at what cost? I don't know. It's a, it's a nice look. Um, let's look at this daily. I don't think I didn't notice that. Pardon? I don't, don't think I didn't notice that. <laughs> Costco at what cost? Come yeah, on. I didn't. It was not my, my finest work, but I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I, we're thinking late August. Yeah, when I started, we were at like mid 500s. And now we are at um, early 700s. So look at, look at Costco secretly having its NVIDIA moment and just making, you know, these big moves to the upside. We're, Costco, upward tread, what is there to say? I'm gonna give it a pat on the back. Um, because this is a really nice look here for Costco. And congrats if you have a membership in this trade in whatever capacity here. Also, um, someone mentioning Tesla moving back up, so I'll head it to you in a, 
a moment. But yeah, Tesla Tesla yeah. curling a little bit. It is. I had yeah. I had my teeny tiny um short and this range actually kind of proved fruitful for a bit that 191 190 140. I didn't get back in just cuz when there's this much top and churn at lows of days, I get a scotch nervous. But curling back up, we're getting uh we're actually kind of surpassing that 191 170 area I was talking about earlier from once we fell with the swiftness. So I will be keeping an eye on what we do here. That being said, if we have a nice push off here, hit the ground running, or I guess, you know, get the cyber truck moving to the upside. I think this will be a very nice look here. How go La Trades? Uh, it's okay. We're likely just going to get stopped at a meta here as it's coming right back down to 401. If it crosses 88, so that's the end of the trade. And we'll give some back on our trade on meta, which is okay. I tried to take this breakout trade through the making of a newer high and end up getting top wick, which is fine. That's okay. That happens. Uh, on uh, yeah, you just have to you just have to accept that. So if it crosses at 488, that's gonna be it's gonna trigger automatically. It looks like it's gonna trigger right now as the bid is showing 88. If it crosses, uh, you'll likely see uh, my position end there. So we'll have to wait and see what we get on META and whether it holds that 401 general area or whether it gives up the ghost. It looks like it's gonna give up the ghost and that's fine. So many topping tail candles right now on my five minute. And there it is, we're at a meta. We give back, that's impossible. Oh yeah, we give back like a sizable portion of what we made sadly. And that's just the truth of the matter. So uh, it is what it is. So we'll have to move on. Apple coming back into that 188 and a third. We're gonna have to pack our patience with that. And then we're awfully close to getting stopped out here on KURI. This one is kind of not, not that important of a position for me because it was just so small. And there we go, we got stopped out. Two losers in a row. Feels great to be on today, baby. Uh, as we give up, the, um, we give up the, the break of VWAP right now on KURA. So that's the line in the sand. It's, it had to hold that level. So KURA, another L for me. So we're, where, what are we today? We're, yeah, so we're still two for three because we're still marginally positive on meta. But yeah, coming into that, wow, bounces above 401 again. You're kidding me. Boo. What are we, we're booing meta? Yeah. Oh yeah. It stopped me up, then it popped up like 50 pennies. So that's okay, that's just the nature of trading. And yeah, that's just how it's gonna have to be. Molfar says, go PayPal, go. Okay, so we were involved in that bad boy yesterday. Let's see what PayPal is up to today. Uh, let's get rid of this stupid stock, I hate it. Uh, let's see what PayPal is up to, because that was a nice move through 63 yesterday on PayPal. Yeah, a decent move here uh, off that 62 bottom, now breaking through 63 on PayPal, still negative 1% on the day. This bad boy got an upgrade yesterday, much to the chagrin of its one of its competitors, Squarespace, or sorry, Squarespace Block, uh, who actually got two downgrades today, or upgrades. Upgrades? Uh, yeah, two upgrades for two Block. Two upgrades for a Block today, one yesterday, so three upgrades in two days. For Block, PayPal got downgraded today by that Monet company. It's going through that 63 level with some vigor right now. So good look right now for PayPal as it breaks through that whole dollar level. We'll keep an eye on that. The Katina Man is printing on a firm. Good trade there. What is a firm up to a Katina Man? We haven't even looked at that today. Let's bring in the side chart and look at AFRM. The heavily shorted name has been giving us multiple opportunities to trade it as of late. Let's go into the five on a firm. Yeah, there you go off that 42. 20 area popping back up into 4260. This one has been, uh, yeah, it's still an inside day today. We're definitely, uh, we're definitely within yesterday's price action, Adara. Yeah, I was gonna say I like that level, like this level that um, that 42 area. Oh, sorry, area. let me just put oh, the ticker in so people can follow along and then just tell me exactly what you're talking about here. Go for it. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I always like vaguely point that. Like, look at that. That is that 42, 4280. Yeah, bounce, bounce. Bounce, oh, bounce. Yeah. We're coming back into it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say I would be cognizant of whatever level that is. I'm slightly blind. Yes, yeah. yes. Former support kid act as resistance. No question about that. So uh, good call out by Adair there. We'll have to see if a firm can continue to go to the high side, Adair. Yeah, if it can affirm that positive movement because this market is certainly weak. But you know what's not weak? Mark. Um, one of the stronger in the mark it. Mark it. Also, um, Neil saying in the chat, oh, hi, Mark. Uh, Wonderful, the room reference there, I'm guessing. Um, and yeah, I mean, Mark is, is making quite a move up here. There was some news with um, Senior Softy 
Um, yeah, so Remark, Remark Holdings posted earlier, it's official with three exclamation points. Microsoft making Remark AI global together, $80 million initial partnership. Congrats to the Remark um, social media team for that lovely message. And also congrats to um, Mark on this really nice move up here. This is a penny stock moving kind of like a, like, you know, a normal stock in a way. And by that, I mean higher highs, higher lows. I find like some of these to be a little bamboozling. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Sharif in terms of how they move. Do you know what I mean? Like if you look at the RVSN, these ones will kind of hang out at a level. This one reducted a little bit, right? I know a lot of them will just kind of curl up around VWAP and hang out and then they move up. And I know, Sharif, you are very apt yeah. at knowing how to trade these names uh, with that VWAP bounce and hold You're or hold and bounce. Sorry, I know a lot of people on the floor are able to trade those names. Not really my cup of soup, but something like Mark, I think the way that we do have this, uh, you know, kind of a, an upward trend is kind of an interesting move. I would probably still not get involved because it is a penny stock, but I just think a nice look on that. And shout out to um, Tommy Wiseau and The Room because I enjoyed that reference, and why not? Uh, but yeah, certainly something to be remarked upon looking at Mark today. And also a nice look for Microsoft. I mean, not, not stock-wise, but just interesting news with regards to Microsoft partnering with more AI ahead of its earnings tonight. I have a feeling AI and ChatGPT may be mentioned in this earnings call. I will take a wild, a wild guess there. But I think, yeah, it sounds like Meta is making you upset. Yeah, it is, because it popped right back up into my entry. So a uh, bit bamboozling there, but it looks like it's projecting off the 200 period on the five. And so that's the look that I'm seeing right now. If we can go to the chart, guys, yeah, every the blue, the blue line is the 200 period moving average, the exponential. And you had one pop, two pop, three pop, four pop into that 200, and all of them got rejected. And it's not like it's the whole dollar level either, but Meta is, you know, quite frankly, it looks like it's going to break up to the high side. Maybe I should have given this a bit more room. I don't know. I gave it to 88 through the break of the, the whole dollar. So I did give it about 12 pennies. Maybe I should have given it about 25 pennies, 30 pennies. Maybe that was a mistake on my part, but it is headed to the high side again. Higher lows for Meta going into that 402 area. And I really have a mind to get back into this. There it goes again right now showing it's going to touch 402. Good strength here on Meta. Bamboozling as always, but... Uh, yeah, it is what it is on that trade. So we're right back at 17.6 on the future. So let's watch for possible resistance um, at the 100-point level on the NQ. We had given it, uh, given up 17.6 without pausing. So that descent down um, at around noon, 12, 12.15 12, or so when we started tanking, uh, we didn't really slow down at 17.6. It just blew through it. Now, do we break above 17.6 without stopping? Right now, it looks like it is stopping a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see whether we get the 100-point rejection on the NQ for now. We'll have to wait and see. VWAP on my chart on the NQ, 17,644. Yesterday's closing print on the NQ, 17,705. So we're about 105 points away from that right now um, from yesterday's closing price, down 0.59% on the day. It's been lower lows and lower highs on the NQ. We haven't changed that trend since the opening bell. Um, and even at the opening bell, we got right into VWAP, rejected that level and made new lows right thereafter. So we'll have to wait and see whether we can get a bit of a bounce here in uh, the power hour shortly, uh, about to arrive here in about half an hour or so. Or sorry, no, no, that's an hour and a half. Power hour is three o'clock. Um, we'll see whether or not we can uh, get some more liquidity in some of these names to the high side anyway. Apple, the only trade I'm involved in. I've got a tiny position left on this. Initially got short there at about 188.81, and we rode this for uh, over a dollar as it broke that 188 area into the downside. So happy about that, but not holding much um, anymore. Let's check KURA quickly because, you know, I really want to hurt myself. No, it's, it, it's continuing to go down, so that's good. So it's not, it's not a meta trade quite yet. Um, yeah, meta looks like it's coming back right back down again into 401 and a quarter. We'll have to wait and see if it can hold 401. Yeah, it's not much else for me to talk about right now. Maybe Nexi, uh, for those who like that uh, power hour type of trade for small cap gappers, uh, this is what I would call a VWAP hold high of daybreak where you know, you have that big move up initially, and then it kind of goes consolidative during the less liquid time of day, but it remains above VWAP or at VWAP uh, during that consolidation phase. That's exactly what it's doing here, a little bit above VWAP. So maybe you can build a position around 21, um, which would be a little bit above VWAP currently, but the low end of the consolidation range, and then look for a, a big move up. Nexi looks good. 
It's up 161% on the day, and the liquidity's uh, the liquidity's still there. So be careful with this one, though. Obviously, it goes without saying because it is a small cap gapper, and uh, it. What was the float on this again? I need to check real quickly. The float on Nexi guys is sub one million, 766,000 share float. So tiny. Let's check the uh, short float on it. 3.6%, so you know, not negligible, but uh, not big either. So not much to say with respect to Nexi short float. Just keeping my eye on Meta here. If it really gets going, I might get back in this. Yeah, no, I think I think this market has been certainly, to borrow a word um, from Sharif here, to borrow Sharif, is a bamboozling. Yeah. You don't know which way to look. You look left, the market looks right. You look long, the market looks short. Things seem perfect, and then you get involved yep. in a trade, and it falls out from under you. Uh, but basically, I did get, speaking of getting involved in trades, I did get involved again, because I hadn't really taken a trade today since that AMD moment, which I'm trying not <laughs> to have such sad deer eyes about. But basically, um, I got involved in this not on a whim. I got involved because I liked this. I got, I, I'm taking this only to 628, because like I said, I think my trades are the best when I have these very scalpy kind of moves planned, and I need to be more cognizant of that going forward. That 627 hold, I really liked, because that was an area that we kind of fell down from, and then we were curling up back up to it. I said, hmm, I like this. I'm getting out before we hit 628. I'm getting out 627.99. Why am I getting out there? Because that 628 was a bit of a, a sticky situation for video earlier. We held it really well, and then we kind of fell below, and I don't want it to be a situation where we can't eclipse it again. So I'm setting my point of exit just below. We're going to see if this ends up going okay, depending on how much we struggle with this. I may have to edit my exit. I might have to take out a little bit earlier. We might have to scalpulate just to scotch. There you go. But, um, but yeah, no, I think, I think NVIDIA seeming to like this movement up. I did like this curl back up. And it, like I said, just trying to take more conscious trades, getting involved, because uh, I think lately I've, I've been moving towards just kind of punching in a bit more on a whim just and telling myself that's confident trading. That's not necessarily the case. You could be confident, but it, when it makes sense to be confident, and I think that's the biggest thing I learned today, hashtag AMD life. Let's look at AMD. <laughs> yeah, AMD falling back down here. Congrats to Sean. AMD is a member of his um, today very inclusive dollar club. All these dollar club guys partying over here. So I think, yeah, AMD fell. Like, you know, I have, my issue is I hadn't planned this ahead of time, so I can't be upset about this trade, uh, but I can say I learned something from it. And that's why I wanted to get involved in that NVIDIA trade, because I didn't yeah. want to sit here not taking any trades, because I was nursing my AMD wounds. Um, you know what I mean? I just want to talk about Ethereum here Please for a do, second. Yeah. I just got an alert that Ethereum is rocketing up, and I don't think it's rocketing up, but it's up 3%. Uh, kind of... Uh, yeah, just really got going there at 10 a.m. I didn't really notice it till now. Good look on Ethereum here as it closes in possibly at that $2,400 level. Got to $2,380 on the day. Good look for Ethereum. You know, this one really sold off after the spot Bitcoin ETF was approved. It was kind of a sell the news event for all of crypto. I anticipated, I got to tell you the truth, I thought maybe Ethereum would be the next to run because, well, people would start pounding the desk for an Ethereum ETF, and that wasn't the case. I mean, having a look here at the daily, we can see how much Ethereum did retrace. Look at that. It popped into 2,700 bucks, but it was a topping tail candle, and maybe that should have been indicative of a, what the, uh, the price action subsequent to that was going to be because it, it big boy dropped. So off that 2,700 bottom top, I mean, uh, we gave up about 20.5% to the low of this candle here on January 22nd. But look at this, we are holding that consolidation bottom, right? That 2150, 2200, absolutely holding up. And that has been a support level going into basically early December, the first or second week of December when we actually broke through 2200 bucks. That's, and look at that, that we actually had a resistance level. Prior to that, let me get rid of these pivots here so you guys can uh, see this a bit more clearly. And I do apologize for the, uh, the chart. There we go. Okay, what, what the hell is this? Um, Channel momentum? No, we don't need you. Go away. Uh, RSI, MACD, there we go. We can get rid of all this stuff so we can actually see the price action. Yeah, the, the, the consolidation top from November 8th to November 30th was at 2150. And then we broke it big on November 30th, and we never looked back. We've been holding that 2150 level on ETH since that time, and that has held up even on this descent on the sell the news event off 2700. So that 2150, 2200 on ETH, former resistance, now support, good luck there. One, two, three, four days in the green now 
on ETH coming back in possibly into 2400 on the day, 2380 the high. Great look on Ethereum and anybody who's holding this bad boy. Uh, Meta, you suck. Go away. Uh, <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Apple still at that 188 and a half. Nothing to report there. Adara. Yeah, I think certainly we we're, we're both, you know, we were talking earlier about how trading, uh, you will always be mad. And I think both, <laughs> both of us feeling that a little bit today. But I think, you know, it's all good. And I think, honestly, as, as much as I was bemoaning AMD earlier, I think that trade taught me something. I really do, because I was really cognizant getting into this NVIDIA trade, and it worked out. Look at this. Like I, I said, I like that curl back up. I did not want to stay in beyond that 628 because I was a little bit nervous at 628. Got out at 627.99, and at first I was like, oh, it's going to keep going. And it kind of did, and then we kind of fell back into below the 628 area, right? I'm not saying 628 won't decisively break, mind you. It did earlier, but I just wanted to be cognizant of it. And so that, I think, um, you know, just something to keep in mind. And I, really, like I, I say this all the time, and I'm really trying to learn something every day and with every trade. And, you know, there were, some, there were some good trades today. There were some questionable trades today. But always grateful that I have this great community, both in the chat and in person, that I can learn from. And so grateful to be in the sim and have this opportunity to learn. And hopefully, you know, we're all learning together in this. Um, some people were mentioning um, PFE, Pfizer, in the chat here, too. Also, Enad was asking, um, what does give up the ghost means? That's basically when there is a movement and then it just kind of kind of falls off. That's kind of what giving up the ghost means. I can ask Sharif because I know Sharif uses that one a lot, but I would say that would be my interpretation. Pfizer is an interesting one. Um, bit of a double top here, 2805. Uh, both, this one pre-market and this one right after open. Then we fell with the swiftness right below this area consolidation of this 2765 area. Shoot below here. Um, kind of curled down a little bit, ended uh, up touching that just below 26. Coming, or sorry, 27, sorry. Coming back up into VWAP and rejecting it just as quickly. I think certainly an interesting area. Could we be curling back up? We're at this area we rejected at earlier, this 2720. I don't really know what I, if I see any uh, thing in Pfizer for me personally, but just generally this trend of lower highs, lower lows um, move down here. Let's look at UPS, speaking of earnings, because this one delivering a nice short, if you were involved in this here for UPS, expedited delivery of a short. <laughs> then we had a bit of a double bottom at this 145, kind of climb, try to make a climb back up. And hey, I like levels, so I got really excited. I love this. This 147 area, look, uh, consolidation earlier, big bounce, and then we fell from there. Levels. <laughs> I, I just get really levels. excited when I see patterns. Yeah. But 147 and 145, definitely key areas for UPS. I think there was a short long to be had, pun, that, that was confusing. I think there was a brief long to be had from 145, and I think 147, certainly um, a key area. I, I like patterns, and I just wanted to point that out. Also, I have a question for you. Yeah. So we're talking about power hour. Would you say that small caps have their own power hours? Because I've noticed these don't always oh. behave in the whims of the market, and if so, what would you say that power hour is for small caps? Um, it's a good question. So I, I don't typically think that small caps march to the beat of the overall market's drum. They march to the beat of their own drum. However, my VWAP hold high of daybreak is kind of predicated on power hour, bringing more liquidity into it. So what the VWAP high daybreak is, is typically a small cap gapper that popped up in the, either the morning or after the bell and then kind of consolidate sideways above VWAP, okay? for the majority of the morning, so the less liquid time of the day. Then all of a sudden, 2.30, 3 o'clock comes in, traders are back at their desk, the small cap algos are back on, and all of a sudden we get a break of the high of day. And that's the, that's the whole trade. And perfect example is NEXI. It's maybe not materialized into a small cap gapper, but here, let me show you exactly what I mean by this. Let me zoom out a little bit. So look at what this did, Adara. So yeah. the black line here, this is VWAP, okay? So you have that big boy move up, then it's yawn, 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 consolidation, yawn, 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 right back down into 21. So this is an interesting area here because this is the whole trade of the VWAP hold high of daybreak. When it comes into that area, you're trying to build your position during the less liquid time of the day near VWAP. So when that more liquid time of the day hits, case in point, power hour, you get that big move up. And remember I took a trade like that last week? I was going to say EVAC. Yeah, EVAC. Yeah, you, you killed EVA, that on EVAC. Exactly. And then it, it literally stopped, it, it um, halted the second you got out of it. Literally, yeah. So that was a good trade Ooh, last week. Nailed by So that's, this is exactly what I mean by that. And so that's really the only thing that it would incorporate power hour and small caps with.
thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And um, and I think that's a that's a really good example. And thank you uh, for going over that with me because I have noticed, yes, yeah, small cap, certainly an interesting creature. We gave up the ghost at once at 172 there on Adair, uh, on AMD, on Adair, I've get together, bro. Uh, initially, we had dipped into that 171.60, bounced back up into 172.80-ish, and there we go again on AMD. Now breaking the half dollar, we're now at a third of a dollar, 171 AMD, awfully weak, three and two thirds percent in the red. Do we see 170? Adair and I were joking earlier when we said maybe we take the bounce off 170 long on AMD. We know that this bad boy does report after the bell today. Make sure, make sure to be there with the Katina man on the market recap show. He's gonna be covering that as well as who else, Softy? Um, Softy and Google. Softy and the Google. Starbucks, Starbucks. thank you, Neil. Thank uh, we have a plethora of different earnings today, tomorrow. So the market recap show, gonna get all those. Uh, look at your AMD trade, Katina man, because I think you'll be pleased this punch or pleasantly surprised. It is now below 171. Here we go. We might get 170. We were just, I mean, I was tongue in cheeking when I said 170 today on AMD. What do you it's see? It's fallen. It's just oh, yeah. fallen. Sorry. It just got, I get really excited when the market is. It, this is such a great day to be trading, I have to say. Well, well, not no, I, I'm learning. annoyed I'm with sorry. Meta. I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie. I apologize. I hated this trade on Meta, especially that the fact that it went right back up again and I gave the majority of my profits back, but that's just the way it works on META. Uh, I didn't really care too much about that Zora trade because it was a small size, but um, yeah, let's see what we get here. I'm gonna send it to you because I want to bamboozle the trade into Nexi here. Yes, yeah, no, sorry, Paul. I guess, yeah, I'm not trying to make it, like I just think, I don't know, I just get excited when the markets are it. like this. Uh, but yeah, I do under, you know, trading, and I, I had some, some, you know, I had some strange trades earlier uh, for sure as well. Um, although I realize it's a bit different, you know, being in the simulator, but just trying to learn and, and trying to come up with strategies that work for the long term, I would say. Yeah. Um, Citigroup, speaking of um, questionable moments in life, uh, Citigroup <laughs> coming into maybe a double top. It looks like it might break it. I would like to explain why I exited Citigroup where I did. Um, so I did get out because I didn't like this little wick up here and then that really steep fall down. And I waited a little bit and I was like, you know what? We cannot hold this 5630. So I got out there. Definitely got out too early. We continued to the upside, but you know what? I'm like, not trying to get too down on this. I just wanted to use an example of like trading. It, it, it happens. The market, that was not English. Trading it happens could be like the, the tagline of the show. But um, I guess when I say that out loud, but, but it does happen. And you know, I think just trying to learn from every trade, um, that would be really opportune. Because uh, the market does like to throw, to throw curveballs at you. For sure, but yeah, I guess I guess I wasn't trying to say like every trade has, has been perfect because certainly mine have not been. But I think uh, today, um, but I think what I'm trying to say is I think it's a, it's a it's definitely an interesting market to be around. The Katina man is printing and he's awfully excited next to me right now. And if you're wondering what he's excited about, have a look at this chart over here. Uh, yeah, this is all it is. We are on our way to 170. Ram Ram, if we can show the chart, please. Uh, on our way to 170, this is a big boy descent on AMD. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, are you going to cover everything in front of 170 or are you just going to let this go? He's putting the tweet out right now. Uh, the Katina man just wrote in, the, in the, the chat there, covering more here on AMD as it nears uh, once. Wow, we are at a lot, 170, a lot quicker <laughs> than I anticipated, Adara. I did not think that we would be at 170 all, all that quick, but there it goes. Big, big move down here on, um, yeah, on AMD. It's a lot of volatility. I mean, look. Could this be some profit taking ahead of earnings, right? Because we, we, it was a huge move up lately. I mean, nobody can really deny that. So just in case, I guess maybe earnings don't come in line or the guide's a little softer than what the street was expecting. You, you wet your beak on some profits, you de-risk a little bit. Um, there's really no headline here, guys. I've been looking for a headline on AMD. One hasn't been forthcoming. Uh, in fact, that 137 today, uh, we got uh, uh, this headline over here, AMD price target maintained with 200 by Rosenblatt. That wasn't on, that wasn't on this morning, was it? Um, I know that Rosenblatt. we had Raymond James downgrading AMD this yes, morning. Yes, absolutely, and I'm looking right at it over here. Uh, the downgrade by uh, Raymond James. Yes, you're absolutely right, but this price target maintained 200 um, by, uh, by Rosenblatt, so that came in. 
and that didn't obviously have any effect on the descent. And that came in at 1.30. Rosenblatt reiterates buy on advanced micro devices, maintains $200 price target. So that's in front of earnings. We'll have to wait and see what we get, guys. But uh, yeah, interesting look, long nexi. Let's see what we get on this bad boy. Yeah, Nexi looks like it could, yeah, that, that looks like a very nice um, pop there um, at VWAP. Because I know that this, like, this is a strategy that clearly works. We saw it on yeah. EVAX last week. We'll and, and you know your small caps, you know the strategy. So I think really cool look here. And I'm looking to build. So this is not the full position. So the oh, whole point is to build into VWAP if it descends into VWAP. So you never really want to get in the entire position uh, all at once. So building in here, I've have a B, I have another a DCA plan DCA at 2105, and then I'll be DCAing into 20. All much smaller size, but if it goes without me, then I'll have to deal with it with a smaller size. So too bad. Well, I like that too because we someone was asking earlier, like you know what what about DCAing or, or what I guess about piecing into positions. I think yeah. this is a good example. If it has a plan, and this one is like clearly a key plan that you can use for yeah. multiple stocks, should it set up. So I think. Same idea, even like with, you know, I, I did DCA into Meta a little bit earlier as well, so I'll pull up that trade. I will DCA, like, I, I'll decide, I get into a trade, like a small position, and then there'll be certain levels where I'm like, if we hold here, I'll add. If we don't, I will leave here. And that's what happened with Meta. I got in. This was also an example of, I know we were saying earlier how to be patient in a trade. I put in this order, and then I was like, I'm going to get a coffee, Meta be good. And then I, um, I got filled. I came back with the coffee, I got filled. We were up about 50 cents, which made me a skosh nervous. And then I noticed we, we held at this level. And that's why I ended up adding, because that would have been where my exit, because I did this really nice, um, this, this interesting area around that, just above that 405 was of interest to me. And then we flew lower and ended up working out right. But I think, like, I, I plan my DCAs a little bit differently, but I think the point I'm trying to make is if you have a plan and you stick to that plan, I think, yeah. I think that can be yes. key. And I just wanted to no put question about that it. out there. Also, Luke Shun saying, AMD, um, oh, there was something about, AMD. oh yeah. I, a couple comments about AMD. There's one I was looking for in particular. Oh, yeah. It's most definitely profit-taking. Could be a good point ahead of earning. That's what we, I was saying. You yeah. know what I mean? I think yeah, that's, yeah. Sure. I think, I'm sorry. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's right. I, I absolutely agree with that because, I, again, I mean, you only need to look at the daily chart on AMD to figure out why people will be risk, de-risking a little bit here. Let's have a look at the semis, and here is the daily on AMD. Let's go daily like that, and let's remove the... Uh, Let's remove, uh, excuse me, the pre-market action so that we can see the gaps because, well, it's appropriate. because we've been This is the move since October. So you could say, you know, it was a bit of a weak fall, uh, late summer fall. I mean, AMD did not retrace that badly uh, as much as the market did. But there we go. We bottomed out, like everything else in uh, mega cap world, tech world, October 31st. And since October 31st, Adara, we're going we're gonna to do this right now live. We are up. On AMD, 96.21% at the high from the lows of October to the highs that we made on the 25th, so five days ago. <laughs> yeah, um, obviously giving up a little bit right now. I personally don't see a technical level of support until that 150. Look at that crest, that 150, a rejection, and then a break eventually of that 150 level. So if we get going to the downside here on an earnings miss on AMD, it could be sayonara and uh, hello 150. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what we get on that. AMD just broke 170. It's on its way down. The Katina man is printing over there. There's the money spin, baby. What a day it has been here on AMD. Let's move back into, where the hell is my AMD chart? There we go. There goes the 170 break. Does it stay below 170 or do we get a 400 bounce like we got on Meta? Let's watch. I'm not gonna participate, but four and a third percent down ahead of earnings on no headline guys. Yeah, I mean, buying into that AM dump earlier, certainly a mistake. I'm pretty sure I got long where Sean got short. Um, I thought I saw this little curl up. It was not a curl up and I got out. Um, but yeah, like I said, trying to learn um, from trades and I think AMD, you know, congrats, Sean, definitely lots of dollar club winners. I'm sure we'll be continuing pressing Woo! that button all the way till close. Um, and then also talking about the earnings. He's, after. he's still holding Meta, by the way. Oh, the Katina man is still holding at Meta at 400, baby. So many, so many guys partying in the Dollar Club right now. All these little winners partying there for sure. Um, but yeah, I think like AMD, we, we were holding 170 for a hot minute, then we kind of fell. Not getting involved, got involved way too quickly earlier, and I, not a thing I want to do again. Um, also, Starbucks making a really nice move up here. I seeing getting extra caffeinated during this midday period. Um, we had I was I was kind of interested in this, but I couldn't really find a, a perfect direction to play. 
We got into this, uh, broke into this consolidation area and certainly have been continuing to bounce out of here, this 94. A little bit higher, bounce a little bit, shoot back down, play around in it. Now making a decisive move higher past that 94. Let's look at the daily on Starbucks. Oh, this is a, this is a look. Um, so I said I made that O because I immediately turned it on and we had this giant fall from grace here, November 17th. It had half a November to remember uh, and the other November it did. It looks like it, you know, didn't have enough pumpkin spice lattes, little, lost a little energy here, moved to the downside. <laughs> but I will say what's interesting is where we popped up was, was kind of around some of the, this, these pops earlier, that 108-esque area. We had a pop up here May 23rd, 2023 and we kind of fell lower. And this also another area I'd like to keep an eye on for Starbucks, especially with things can really gap up on earnings, speaking of gaps. Really good mm. week for us to do this. Yeah. But look at this. One, two, That's three, why I want four. To do it. Uh, for yeah. that specific reason. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a good idea. This 97 bottom, and then we come in, try to test that uh, 97, 98 top, fall back down right. So I would say I would be very cognizant going into earnings of that 97, 98 area. That would be my food for thought. Um, looks like we're trying to curl back up off of that bottom of that 92 ish that we had earlier. But yeah. Certainly, we'll have to see uh, if Starbucks getting a late, a midday injection here of, um, of buyers, but we'll have to see if that lasts heading into its earnings. Uh, yeah, really wild day today. So, some nice trades, some meh trades um, for me yeah. personally. But I think, you know, that comes with the territory. And if I can learn a little bit every day and take some trades here, I will always be grateful for that. I also want to talk about NVIDIA really quickly um, in terms of levels because, who boy, they have presented themselves. Um, boop and boop. So uh, this top line, uh, you know, like this resistance around the 634 area, sort of a double top here, right? We curled back up. I got into a brief long. We curled back up initially here. We hit that 634, and this was crazy to watch. We, we dropped a dollar in like 20 seconds. We were seeing this while the real deal was happening with Neil. Shout out. And then we had this um, big, you know, th this candle that was showing, hey, the buyer's kind of running out of steam here. Seller's eating them right back up. We closed right around that 634, fall to the downside. Then, and why I got involved in this long initially was I like that 628 hold for a moment because that 628 uh, area, huge area of support earlier, then we fell below. And then I decided going back and I was like, you know what, let's get involved in 627 because 628 is actually where resistance is becoming support. So I got back involved there, got out right before we hit 628 and then we did fall back down at 628. So basically, lo really long winded way of saying I would watch 628 and 634, that range on, on NVIDIA, very clear. And a good example of as Sharif says and something I've learned a lot from, uh, support becoming resistance, resistance becoming support. Oh, yeah. NVIDIA, 628, a little bit of a wall that it, it's butting its head again like a, like a bull. I don't know. <laughs> Weird metaphor. That's my look on NVIDIA. Yeah, I like that. Uh, interesting long here at 170 on AMD. We, you know, we kind of guessed that we would probably get a little bit of support at that $10 level. And uh, there you go. You got about 77 pennies, maybe a bit more if it continues up here. If you're looking along this stock, I definitely see a uh, resistance level at that 171 and a half. Look at that trough that we bounced off and then eventually gave up the ghost here at around uh, 145 through that 171 and a half. So if you're looking for a pop and a possible profit taker um, on AMD, if you get through that 171 level, uh, I'd be looking to de-risk the majority of my position into 171 and a half, owing to this trough over here. But we'll have to get through that 171 level first. And uh, that is not forthcoming quite yet. So if you're long, pack your patience. Went long Boeing at 200, says Chill Vibes. I didn't even realize Boeing was uh, at 200. Let's have a look here at That's Boeing nice BA. Let's go to Daily Movers. Where are we going to take off here, Adara? We're going to take off this one. A oh, pixel work segment, Mike. Yeah, it's, it's done for the day. Uh, let's BA, let's go. All right, what do we got on Boeing? Okay, so it's down into the right here um, on, um, on Boeing on the day. It did break 200, albeit uh, quite quickly, and then a, a reclaim right back up. It did dip into that 199 and two thirds area. It is long, right? I mean, it is above 200 right now. 200 and a quarter-ish area, big move down for Boeing. Again, guys, one of the better documentaries I've watched on Netflix, and if you have Netflix, I would really suggest you get on this. It's called The Case Against Boeing, and it really shows you, um, you know, I don't want to say the transition from Boeing, but essentially things went south, south for Boeing after they merged with McDonnell Douglas, and that happened in about 1997. Since that time, it's been kind of, you know, one issue after another, either delays or malfunctions or quality control issues. 
It was more about McDonnell Douglas bringing a more business approach and profitability focus rather than quality control and, and safety. Um, that kind of characterized Boeing's uh, culture prior to that. So uh, I'm, I don't want to burn the rest of it for you guys, but if you haven't watched it, go out, spend the time to watch it. It is super interesting, especially, you know, with uh, the fact that Boeing's been in focus a lot lately with some of the issues they're having. And earnings tomorrow morning. Yes, ma'am. So that'll oh, be a very... Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, tomorrow oh, okay. uh, before open, that will probably be on the watch list. Spoiler alert, maybe. Okay. Um, along with maybe some names like um, MSFT. I don't know if anyone, you know, MSFT maybe, or GOO, GL, that little company there. Yeah. No, I'm joking. But yeah, those two for sure on watch. And Thomas, Thomas, you're bang on. That They actually talk about that in the documentary, Thomas. If it ain't Boeing... I ain't going. That used to be a slogan, huh. legit. Like, people did not want to go on airplanes unless they were made by Boeing. So good was their reputation at the time. I don't think many people are saying that anymore. In it fact, might be if my it mom is Boeing, asked me, remember when they grounded the, uh, the, the, uh, the MAX because of the Lion Air and the um, um, Ethiopia Air? My, my parents were, my parents travel a lot, and they were like, my mom was like, I am not going on any 737s. I don't care if it's the Max 9, Max 100. I don't want it, right? And so you flipped the culture from like one where there was complete trust to one to, there was completely distrust. So I don't mean to badmouth the company. I love airplanes, and obviously Boeing is doing something that most of us can't do, but. They gotta, they gotta make quality products. Last minute on the show, Adira. Yeah, I can't believe, like this time flew. I hope you guys had a good time. We certainly had some fun up here. Also, JB, JWB Killer asked me about snow. So I'm just gonna quickly look at the five minute in snow. I like this area, a form of support becoming resistance, this 206 area, and that VWAP bounce at 207, uh, 80 certainly exciting with this big candle showing that buyers got the last, or sellers got the last laugh here. Buyers had their last hurrah eaten up right at VWAP, confluence with VWAP especially with that earlier bounce at that 207.80. Well, uh, I know, sorry, this is a bit of a quick look here for you, JWB killer, but I do think that that I would be really cognizant of the, the 206 area and that 207.60 area with snow. But yeah. I got to read these out before you send it. If it's Boeing, I'm out the door, says Angry Bear. A little bit of a pun there. And the other one was, um, oh, Oh, no, no that, that, I can't read that one out loud. So it's okay. I'll just send it to you now. I think we're done. Well, yeah, no, I think we will, we will see you tomorrow with some more, some more gaps, filling in some knowledge gaps tomorrow. Uh, but for now, we shall say au revoir. See you tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Brendan is, in fact, at the big desk. Hey, guys, yeah, welcome in. Two o'clock on a busy afternoon here. Lots of uh, things moving around, lots of things to discuss. Let's jump right into. Uh, I was just looking at the 30-year yield.